Is there anybody you can send to call all Why not call somebody that can call them? That's all good. What is making that noise? For two hours. Somebody is talking. What? What? That's the only one that said that. Come to the situation. Say and say and support to the other body. It wasn't clear. She was even asking me whether she should post it on the platform. I said no. Post it. So those who can come to the platform. Post it. Post it. Post it. Post it. Post it. Hey, uh, okay. right. I'll see you later. Thank you. I'm Bonnie Prof. Welcome. I think I used to have something. <laughs> Commissioner, I'm not supposed to be part of this. Okay, you have to be part of this. No, me as a scholar, just said this. Okay, right. 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 Okay, I'm now. I said, I'm not... Okay. Uh, good morning. Good morning, CTA. Good morning, directors seated here. Uh, good morning, all state directors that are on the platform, and good morning, all other staff. From those of us that are in this hall, and those of us that are also watching us online. Uh, today is a very important day in the technical milestone for the census. Uh, one of our best in Africa, uh, Dr. Collins Opio, who has been with us uh, practically from February 2022, uh, is going for another assignment. And uh, for all the work that has been done, we said it's important to hold this valedictory session and let it be an opportunity for all of us to look at where we were before he came and where we are as he's trying to to move ahead so this is going to be a a, a kind of overview of all the processes uh but before i can start i would like to recall uh, Dr. Collins Opio was here to do an assessment of the preparedness of the commission in December 2021. And uh, after that technical assessment, uh, he said that the commission requires about two years to be able to implement the census uh, as planned. And before that time, we were planning to implement the census uh, in 2022, November. So we promised him that we are going to work assiduously to ensure that all the things that are required to implement the census are done. And uh, he said we need about to work 24 hours to be able to achieve that. So going by that, I think the commission took a pledge in the uh, boardroom that we are going to work 24 hours to be able to implement that census. And by the grace of God, he was the one to assign to be part of us to do that work. So he reported in February, and we started working. 
And uh, I can tell you before that time, virtually all the structures required for a digital census to be implemented are not in place. And uh, for those of us that are here, uh, we want to say we, he has done remarkably well. And I want to seize this opportunity also to acknowledge the efforts of our colleagues, uh, uh, those that have even retired recently, and those that have retired in the past, uh, Evelyn Olani Peku, uh, Dr. Ahaya, uh, Matthew, and so many others that have retired. And also those that have even retired and I have to sit back to ensure that this work was done very well. I can say MK Usman, and uh, so many hosts of other people that have come to do this work. We need to acknowledge their efforts. And uh, for those of us that are here, we believe that we are working, even though we are not working 24 hours in the office, but we are closing at 12 midnight and ensuring that all the deliverables are, are, are put in place. You know, sometimes when you see a huge man, you expect him to do something that is very huge. And that is what uh, Dr. Collins of Pio has shown in the Nigerian census process. And uh, as we said, we are also looking forward that whenever this job is going to be concluded, wherever he is, uh, the chairman has expressed his intention to ensure that Dr. Collins is returned back to finish the job he has started. So today and tomorrow, we are going to give all the departments all the operational units. We cannot say everything we have done in two days, but at least we can give an overview of what we have done in two days. And uh, we can all tell ourselves that we are ready for the census. Even this year, we have come to appraise all our operations. We have keyed them based on uh, uh, the template that is given to ensure that the census is held in October, uh, November, 2024. And I think uh, this is what we want the coordinators, the directors, the lead coordinators to just come and present that overview to ensure that uh, at least to have uh, the status of our preparedness so that Mr. Collins uh, can, can say whatever little words he can say. If there are areas of improvement, if there are this, he can pass his comments. So you can see that we have a very tall and ambitious program, and, uh, and we can only achieve this ambitious program by living up to the tax and the time that is allotted to each one of us. So, um, and as much as possible, we want to do other things. So we like as much as possible not to extend. So those that are coming to make presentations, please, we want you to restrict yourself to where you are and probably highlight your work plan and uh, and timelines of activities based on the November 20th uh, census deadline, which we have done for virtually all the operational units and departments. So on that note, uh, I, I need to just give a small overview. Uh, if my slides are ready, I can take it. If my slides are not ready, I can speak to them. Ibuku, is my slide ready? Okay, if it's not ready, I can speak to it because I already have it in front of me. Okay, like I've said, and uh, all of us seated here can bear us witness that within from February 2022 till about March 2023, I think. Uh, Virtually everything that is required for a digital census were put in place. The only thing that we had was that we did not have enough tablet that can go around all the enumeration areas. And even for that, we have developed a kind of strategy to ensure that uh, we, 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 we deal with the shortages. So I'll just remind you, uh, what we have done and which since i'm not going to talk much on it since they are going to have a full presentation on it i will allow the people that are going to make the presentations to come and present in details but i can tell you that uh we have by the grace of god 
did everything about our census mapping, including hybrid methodology for Abadan and uh, areas where there are security challenge. So we can say that our EAD work for the census is 100% completed. But Director Cartography will speak to it in more details. And as we are all aware, we have also set up the recruitment platform. And we have recruited all the required staff for the census uh, uh, before the uh, date. And we have printed those documents and handed over to finance and every responsible agency uh, for it in preparation for, for the census. We have on, on the census operations, uh, we have done virtually everything, the manual we have developed and they were resident in the local government areas of training. For those of us that are in 2006, manual was one of the huge challenge. But as of today, as before uh, our plan date for the training, all our manuals were resident uh, in the local government areas of, of training. And at least we have recruited and trained all the facilitators that were, uh, that were expected for the census. On census training, and that I have, I have also dovetailed now on census training, which we are just about ready to, to train. We have set up census data analysis units which have worked assiduously to ensure that we have an end-to-end -end, uh, data uh, uh, collection and also processing and analysis. And that team, we brought a lot of experts, first from Ghana and the second from Tanzania, to ensure that there is a seamless transmission of data during and, and this thing. On that data processing, we have also developed an uh, enumeration dashboard with ECA, which will make the census in real time. We have set up a very robust data quality management system, and that system was also to manage our NDNs and also manage the building number and household listing and ensure that there is a, a quality of work uh, uh, across all our, our, our systems. Under ICT, uh, ICT have undertaken several trainings uh, to ensure that uh, we meet up with the capacity for a digital census. In the same vein, uh, we set up it as a data center in, in where we are presently on the interim. And we also set up cloud infrastructure to ensure that there is seamless data uh, processing and analysis during and after the census. Then on access management, we have set up uh, a logistic monitoring system to ensure that we monitor our materials on, and on transit and also uh, at the destinations. And uh, we ensure that all these items procured for the census can be seen in, on a system and the location can also be seen to ensure that there is seamless uh, process because that was one of the major, major challenge that we were anticipating. As of today, I can confidently tell you that 760,000 tablets are all in enough for the census for each state of the federation are in the state's uh, central bank of Nigeria for all the 37, uh, 36 states and FCT. We have also set up a robust monitoring and evaluation system under the planning and research department. That system was so effective that uh, you get a very quick uh, uh, response to issues as and where required for actions. Uh, census logistics and security was uh, the two committees, uh, a national committee headed by the National Security Advisor was set up to ensure that uh, uh, security and logistics of materials and all government para startups and agencies are part of that process. Then a census uh, publicity and advocacy committee was set up in addition to the fact that UNAPA has helped us to develop a robust uh, uh, publicity and advocacy strategy. And this is an area that I've always said that we need to work on seriously uh, as we plan ahead for the census. Then I cannot, all of us have been sensitized and made to be aware on the need for the greening of the census. This is a very laudable initiative that was driven by the National Coordinator, uh, presently Director uh, Population Institute and uh, for the census. And that issue of greening the census had been spread not only in Nigeria, but across the, across the globe, uh, that Nigeria is doing a, a digital and green census. We have also, for the first time, under the tutelage of uh, the CTA, developed what we call training center management uh, team to manage 
the, the training centers in terms of uh, attendees, both for facilitators and trainees, to ensure that facility are in good place, and also to ensure that uh, everything that is required at a training center is, is done, and so that the facilitators concentrate on, on their daily work. In addition to that, uh, we have set up a team uh, to look at enumeration of hard to reach areas. And I can tell you that this team has worked assiduously. And these are all innovations that we have not been done before in Nigeria. At least we have done the 1991 census and 2006 census. And in most cases, if care is not taken, these areas are either left behind, not attended to. But this time around, we have a team that is purely working on these hard to reach areas uh, which have been identified by cartography and I've updated uh, on daily basis to ensure that no one is left behind in the census. Then we have set up a, a legal framework where enumerators, supervisors, every function, sanctionaries sign contracts for, for assignments. And uh, our legal team are trying to see how to uh, change the laws uh, on the census and also to include the aspect of digital census data collection. So, and we have set up what we call census operation tracking team. This tracking team monitors census activities on real time and report in the situation room. This has also been a very good innovation and uh, that has assisted us to do a very uh, good job, at least monitor what is going on in all the states. And another laudable achievement was the setting of a call center and a situation room where we are sitting here. Every one of us know how this place was before it we turn it to this, this where it is. And uh, this place can take care of all census operations. Uh, with the press gallery, the call center agents and the hall here that we can receive information across the center. So the call center is another laudable project that uh, at least under the guidance of Dr. Collins, we've been able to set up to ensure that we implement the census. I think the, the situation room, which is our war room, all of us know that if you are part of this situation room, you know how it is. And I can tell you, some states have tried to copy these laudable initiatives. So as far as uh, we are concerned on technical perspective, whether uh, people like it or not, we have paid our dues. And I can tell you, we have paid our dues at the expense of our life. Because when we are planning for this census, we know how much we are stressed ourselves to the, to the barest limit to ensure that we have we deliver on that census that we promise this this country from the chairman commissioners directors and all staff and uh, uh, we have done so well that we wish the public have known what we have done uh, but i think uh, nigeria believe in uh, what is it called press singing probably the pad will help us to do a lot of press press singing and no action I was talking to a colleague, a, a friend. He said that he has not seen an organization, and I stand by it. He has not seen a, a diligent organization like the National Population Commission. So we that are here, we don't even appreciate the kind of organization that we find ourselves, one. And we are the one that seems not to promote our, our interests or what we have done to the outside world. We feel to castigate. I can tell you that, he said that there is no organization. Everything that we said we have supplied, go and check them there in their correct numbers, wherever they are. Because if we don't do that, we know the implications. It's not as if everything that we, we require has to be calculated based on certain parameters. We did not decide that we are going to buy 600, 800,000 tab tablets. We did it because we have about 600,000 EAs. We have about 112,000 supervisors. We know that there are tablets that are going to malfunction, there are tablets that probably may need, so we have to give that supplementary percentage in case of any reasons. So our work is systematic. So I want us uh, moving forward to at least propagate the commission positively. Most of the problem is from inside. So 
I want to thank Dr. Collins. I can tell you we have learned so much from him. We have learned so much from him. And uh, I believe all of us, whether in commission or outside commission, we should try to put what we have learned from him to practice. And uh, I can tell you, he has stood by his sides. You know, when you are huge, we expect you to do a huge work. And Dr. Collins have put a very huge work to the census process. And whether we do a census or not, I can tell you, all of us that have worked with him can stand anywhere in, in the world as far as census practice is concerned, as far as census implementation is concerned, as far as digital census is, is concerned. So um, on that note, sir, unfortunately, I'll not be with you physically throughout today, but definitely tomorrow, wherever I am, I will join. I just lost my father-in-law yesterday night around 10 p.m. And I have a flight to 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 Yola via to Jalingo via Yola, so I will be leaving any moment from now. But I want us to listen to this valedictory, uh, try to participate, and let us listen to whatever remarks Dr. Collins is going to make on your own aspect of the work, so that at least it will help us improve wherever there are, there are gaps uh, uh, on that. So on that note, I want to. To, to thank you most sincerely, sir. But I promise you that by the grace of God, tomorrow I'll join online uh, at 10 o'clock when this meeting will start. Yeah, thank you very much. So, is Director Tato ready? Like I've said, please let's have a timekeeper. I did two, two assignments. <laughs> Look at it. The one assignment from, from is the, overview the and then opening remarks. And I was waiting the I was waiting the time. So who is going to be our timekeeper? Somebody that is rigid. When it's 10 minutes, I'll let the presenter. Uh, 10 minutes, I'll let the presenter. When it is five minutes, shut the presenter down. You understand? Because we don't want the CTA to address to talk at the end. He has to talk immediately a presentation. It, it, it takes like five minutes or there about whatever area he feels you can still touch. So that at least, we, because if you say he will come and do it at the end, it's going to be too lengthy. So you understand? So 10 minutes presentation. So yeah. 15, 15. Maximum of 15, 15 minutes. If you take 10, we'll be happy. Yeah. Okay, okay start. So if you see me go, please, I'm permitted. Sorry about that. Huh? Sorry. Sorry. Don't worry, walk Listen. first. Don't worry. Tony, I'm ready. Okay. We can start. Okay. So you have to tell the way to start. Yes, put minutes there. So if it's 15 minutes, just for the presenter. The presenter will also be looking at it there. So it is when I start. I will greet you people now. I want to greet you. <laughs> Should I? I'm waiting for him really so that they will see what I'm presenting. Cameraman. Tony. You know, go check it I will go beg you for that. So you can go for burial. They have buried the person. They are supposed to be burying him by now. Maybe they buried him. Speak up long. Sorry about that. Hello, good day, Apple. Then put a mobile number of my few dinner. Then I have to have a moment past. Put a hanging up. I think I can start talking. They've had most of these things before now. Have you? Start, man. Good morning, CTA directors and everyone. I'll be talking on census mapping. This is the presentation of the last session. Okay. This is the 
The past three years this year has been we have learned so much from him. Okay. When, when I walked into this call, call I saw him to bed and I was like, "Tito, we have not been here before." He said that we told him to come by ten, and he was there by two. And I said, "That's one thing we did not learn from you." Keeping time. But well, he replied that people also learn so much. That we should concentrate on the ones we learned from him and forget the ones we did not learn. And I think that was a very good line. We really learned so much from him. Sensor mapping is something we've been talking about since 2014. There may not be new, new, many new many things to be hearing, and knowing that we'll be talking in 15 minutes or less than 15 minutes now, it's a very short, uh, I'll just be going through the slides. There are very few slides anyway. So I have an outline, and then the introduction. On the introduction, we have cartography department mandates which is to prepare and maintain a national framework, including locality lists and house numbering for censuses and surveys. Based on these mandates, the department worked assiduously over the years to develop a national geographic frame that can meet international standards. Census mapping, as we all know, is the same thing as enumeration area demarcation, which we call EAD for short. And it is the division of the country into manageable units of enumeration areas for the census exercise. It provides the baseline data for planning and implementation of the census. Census mapping for the upcoming census took place from 2014 to 2022 in 18 phases and pilots. We all remember that we did a pilot in Ondo in 2014, where we tested our methodology and our instruments. And after that, we started doing the exercise in phases. Okay. We started doing the exercise in phases. And in that journey of 2014 to 2022, we started the exercise with traditional GIS methodology where we used paper, both paper satellite imagery and uh, paper forms. From there, we started using semi-digital methodology where we now put the forms onto the tablets before we finally went digital. And at the end of the exercise, we were able to deliver the Nigeria Statistical Geospatial Frame. We adopted the United Nations recommendation of the Global Statistical Geospatial Frame to come up with the Nigeria Statistical Geospatial Frame. And this recommendation is that the use of fundamental geospatial infrastructure and coding, geocoded unit record data. Every record data is geocoded, every unit. And then common geographies for the dissemination of statistics statistical and geospatial interoperability, and then an accessible and usable frame. And at the end of the day, we came up with different geospatial data entities. You can see that the way it is there, you have Nigeria there, you have the states and their city, 37 in number, localities in the country, can see the number the 145,553 localities and then the LG is 774 the words so from the states you have the LG is you can see that the arrow they are going both ways we delineated according to words because of the MOU we had with INEC to delineate words in the country and then we also concentrated on localities and at the end of the day, these are localities will be class, or rather we're already classifying them into a six strata of urban, 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 rural, rural, urban, rural, and rural, rural, which is different from the binary classification we have been doing of just urban, rural. And then we have the enumeration areas, 598,988 in number, physical 
physically demarcated is, and then buildings, you can see the total there, households and persons. You can see for households and persons, you have question mark there, we did not put any number. Reason being that the households we collected data on in the fields, we did not see them. We just asked questions who come, how many people live in, how many households live in this building? So it's not something we can put down the total because, because of the way we ask the questions, you're not really sure. At the end of the census exercise, we'll come up with total number of households we have in the country. The same thing with total number of persons. And um, while doing this exercise from that 2014 to 2022 and beyond, we achieved a lot. One, we used GIS methodology and very high resolution satellite imagery. A homegrown EAD part application was deployed. Primary data was collected with PDEs. And we also transitioned from traditional GIS methodology to fully digital GIS methodology, whereby the exercise became paperless. We developed NPC EAD geoprocessing tools to automate GIS data processing, editing, coding, and validation. And this made us win the 2022 Estuary Special Achievements in GIS Award. Coverage is 100%. 99.6% physical demarcation and 0.4% hybrid technology. The exercise produced all the set deliverables. You know, at the beginning, we had a set of deliverables we were to achieve, and we achieved that because we now have EA maps of everywhere in the country, SA maps, RA, locality, LGA, states maps, and then locality list of the country. A lot of derivables are also achievable through leveraging the huge special resources and the expertise of GIS specialists in disaster management, healthcare, education, security, and defense, tourism and hospitality, utilities, and all others. There's a whole lot you can derive from the frame, the data we have. And at the end of the day, a sustainable national geographic frame was achieved. The work plan we have now towards the census is, as you can see on that table, the first one is targeted EAD frame of being, which we will do with desktop. It will be a desktop updating with GIS artificial intelligence. It will start as soon as we're able to procure very recent satellite imageries. And then physical demarcation of some areas earlier demarcated using hybrid technology. We know that some of the places we use hybrid technology was because there was a refusal of access, a place like Canaan land, and then some other places like that. So for such places, we propose that physical demarcation should be done there so that to reduce the number of states where we have hybrid technology. And then deployment of trial PES GDB frame extraction. Extraction and deployment of trial PES GDB. And then validation of ground and ground treating of hard to count areas using enumeration effort metrics. Production of static maps for EA archiving and on the shelf map seals. Capacity building in GIS for census operations, sustainability and continuity of NPC geospatial resources. We can see how people are retiring in the commission. If something is not done quickly, we will have a problem there is need for capacity building so that those coming up will know what we have done, where we did them, and then how to move forward. And then data analysis and production of thematic tables. These are the things we have in our work plan. Challenges. Lack of funds to implement activities in this work plan. Some of those activities are supposed to have taken place by now. Between the time census was rescheduled and now, Things like that, uh, ground routing and uh, validation of enumeration effort metrics, we should have done it. GIS capacity building, static maps, we should have done them. We actually got approval to do them, but then no funds to do those things. 
So lack of funds is a major challenge. And then petitions, claims, and counterclaims from states and LGEs with regards to locality names and extents. We keep getting petitions from states and LGEs telling us that this locality name is not a locality name. We are not locality A, we are locality B. And then B will write and say, no, they are not B, they are A. So you don't really know which one to take. But the beauty of it all is that we know everywhere has been demarcated. In conclusion, census mapping for the upcoming population and housing census was painstakingly planned and executed, utilizing outcomes of the critical analysis of past EADs in the country. MPC has fulfilled one of its constitutional mandates using GIS technology to provide the nation with a sustainable national geographic frame for censuses and surveys. The Commission will continue to update this frame from time to time. We say it's a sustainable national geographic frame because of the work we did, the GIS methodology we used, that means for subsequent censuses, we don't have to start demarcation from the scratch. We will just do updating. That is why we call it a sustainable national geographic frame. Thank you very much for listening. I still have time back. Who is the moderator? He said I should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you very much. Let me thank myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, yes. So we'll take comments from a uh, city. Oh. Ready. It's going to be a long city. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. You are still in that mode. Eh? I was in that mode five hours ago when I woke up. Oh, no, not five hours. Seven. Okay, so thank you, uh, Director Carter Department, uh, for that uh, comprehensive presentation. I don't know how you weave all those technical words, jargon, and all that detail in 10 minutes. CTA would need at least one hour to be able to do the same that they will get there. So thank you very much. I think that uh, the cartography department, in terms of what they have done with the National Geographic Frame of the Census uh, uh, Geography Frame, which they now call sustainable and understand completely why they call it that, needs to be commended for the innovation, for the methodical approach to doing that, and of course, for the award, because this is one of the few, if not the only African, uh, you know, institution that has been awarded, given that award for the work that they have done towards the census. So I think they deserve a round of applause. And everywhere I've been to, everybody I've spoken with, I've told them about how you did your mapping here. And uh, the team that went with me to the suburb uh, about three or four weeks ago can tell you how interested people got when they heard about the way this frame was created and how it, particularly how it's going to be applied for the census. So that's, but we can't get into the details of that. So congratulations on that. I see that you're very proactive as usual. So you have, uh, really uh, preempted the stuff that I'm going to say that uh, should be found out because I think you have done most of the work that is required at this stage of the census. So if the census were to go on, you have very little else to do in terms of preparation. But like a good book I keep saying, there are always gaps that people can fill in, to make sure that uh, you improve the quality of the outcomes. So just three to five things that I need to emphasize here. So your starting point is good. You have a very rich and robust geospatial frame. 
unsustainable for that matter. So this is a good thing. But one of the things I know you mentioned there is the hybrid mapped areas. This, uh, in uh, the link in census implementation lingo, would say this is a coping mechanism. Yeah. Coping. Okay. It was done to cope some census. Yeah. Okay. Because it's non conventional. So in census, every time you do something non conventional, we say you're just coping because of the circumstances. And that if the circumstances could change, then you'd revert to the conventional mechanism of doing things. And for many reasons, it's not that uh, the hybrid way is bad, it's just that explaining it to ordinary people, especially people with uh, political minds, can never be easy because it's a technical area. Uh, collective wisdom is that if what is done for you or for the rest of the country is different from what is done for me. And I'm not happy with what I get, I blame it on that one. And uh, when you come to the tribunals, you're going to hear a lot of this. And I've seen in some of the presentations you made before, there have been questions around that. So my point here is that uh, you have to be wary of that, and particularly how you're going to sell it to people beyond NPC. Uh, and uh, yeah, so the handling uh, of that and explaining to people in terms of how much technology is really not too much. I've been to some countries where they insist we don't want, yes, we only want technology to, not for efficiency, for say validation or something like that, or to improve the speed of doing things. But we want you to knock on every door. You have heard that, eh? even in 2024, countries are still asking for knocking. That knock and make sure that. It's a residential place, and if it is, that people are there, and if they are, how many? That's how they want us to do our listing and mapping. But you actually count people as you do that. So it's a micro census. Uh, so, so, yeah, so I think that, yes, we understand why this was done for particularly those areas in the Northeast, but uh, you need to clean up. And particularly, the GIS applications for enumeration in those specific areas, if you understand what I mean. Because the people who are going to enumerate, how are they going to use your hybrid maps? There will be some slight differences, perhaps, in the way the other maps will be used. If there are not differences, that would be great. Yeah. But if they are, uh, the need to be explained to what those differences might be and the impact that those may bring. Never, don't forget that during the census, we use local people who may also be politicized and not seeing or thinking clearly or objectively, if you like. Okay. And those could also be the people that we employ could also be instruments of misinformation, particularly when they're dealing with something that they themselves don't fully understand. So, some sort of uh, sensitization, their education, and some sort of self explanatory plan for people who are going to work in areas where we have uh, this hybrid mapping. And uh, a related question to that would be, now that we have the gift of time, we don't know how much time we have, but we know we do have time. Yes? Would we not want to go back in and be conventional where we can and where we cannot maintain technology. Think about it. If that would be even a remote possibility that some of these areas could have become more accessible now and uh, a lot more hospitable to humans than they were 
when the mapping was concluded. Just something to think about, number one. Number two, you talk about the enumeration effort metrics, the S3 tool. I agree with that. I was part of the negotiation for that. And I was going to talk about its validation because I know there could be a bit of back and forth process, but you mentioned that. So you have that uh, you know, in your corner, so I will not uh, belabor that. Then there is a layering of uh, hard to count, hard to reach, vulnerable. So it's already a very rich, robust, uh, special frame for immigration. But uh, one of the things now that we have time that you could do is uh, to create a subframe out of that. That is for, for enumeration purposes. Or I don't know if you understand. That's just focusing on enumeration where you could be able to add all the information that can be added, especially that can support or facilitate integration. So you'd clearly identify on that map, they had to reach, had to count, you know, this area, so they are known in advance, whoever is working there at some level and they know, because uh, not everybody who attends training gets trained, isn't it? So the people do really need help, you know, beyond training. Uh, remember, we also did mapping of vulnerable populations, you know, pastoralists, refugees, you know, all these people, with displaced people. I know that there was a plan to add that as a geospatial layer that can be so you know, and the maps can easily take us and help us to identify those places on the ground to improve the enumeration outcomes. But some of these people have migration, you know, they move around, so we want to also make sure that uh, we can be able to plow their route so that if they are not found here, the field workers know exactly which corridors to, to be able to find them because they are a significant part of Nigeria's population, especially in the northern part of Nigeria. So we want to make sure that uh, everybody gets an almost equal probability of being enumerated. So, so and then, uh, yeah, so if we could just do a layer, and then to that, you know, we can also add field operation issues like uh, training centers. We can do this. We can add training centers on that particular mode. So we know those of us who are managing the process from here, we know exactly where the centers are. Uh, and we can be able to map out the other logistics you know, according mm -hmm. to those centers as well. So this is something that uh, I think that with the time that you have, uh, can be done even the census offices we are going to we are going to have census offices you know in all lgs or sub lgs we need to check gs locations of, and then other layers so we know because if we have independent monitors or any other monitors who are going to places that they don't know they can use that now to guide them in terms of where they want to go but more importantly if we want to sample areas like go to go and monitor certain things because we may not be able to go everywhere. Then we can use that frame to be able to do that. Okay. And uh, yes, and data collection centers, this is something that uh, I've been talking about data collection centers. So it's sort of, it can be the same thing as a census office, but is a, a strategically located facility where you can get support for digital census operations. Whether the support that you're requiring is internet, or whether the support you're requiring is to charge your device, you know, power, worker, or if you just want uh, material support, like, you know, some of those areas, I forgot to mention that, you need to think about that part of maybe what you are backup strategy for the uh, these high grid areas maybe you're thinking about some physical map or some think i think the areas in nigeria based on what i've seen in other countries where you may need hard copy maps for backup so all these things okay yeah so 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 those ones can always be available at the census office locally because we don't have to print them in advance, so that if it is needed, then it's printed there. 
they let them be collected locally rather than in Abuja and you know so we decentralize it like that so so if we have all those that there could be a layer on uh, the numeration numeration geospatial or the numeration support and then uh, the validation I don't know whether it's validation or verification or both of uh, Locality. Right? Those of you who live in Nigeria and we know what happens in other countries, this is a very delicate matter. I know that countries reject usually when localities success is also a lot of rejection. And sometimes the rejection has to do with just the name. And because there are so many, and the even the census officials don't have enough time to sort of themselves. So you find duplications of missing things and so on and so forth. Uh, or typing errors, you know, then you don't. This, this thing is, uh, is big. It's also related to acceptance of results, which uh, yeah, the public affairs department should uh, also be involved in. And uh, usually the better strategy is to discuss and present or disseminate this ahead of the census at the local level. So we'll have a workshop with the states and talk about the you know the, the friend and then the locality names and you better off going into a census where this has already been discussed. It also gives people a sense of belonging. They know that, oh, we are involved, we are included in the sense and we've been reflected. So they have more reason to participate. Okay, so I'll leave it at that. But I think there could be a few other things. You, know, you just need to clean up stuff because uh, you've done a lot already. Thank you, and keep going. Thank you, Sitio. Thank you very much, CT, for all the uh, comments, observations, and uh, advice. Some of the things you commented on were already taken care of yeah. in the presentation, yeah. like the enumeration effort metrics. Mm? And then for the hybrid. No, no problem. Okay, no problem. For the hybrid, it is. The method of the numeration will be the same. It will be exactly the same. There's no difference. It is hybrid because we couldn't gain access. And it wasn't our making. And it is actually a copy methodology, as you, as you see it. Because since we did not have access to those places, we had to look for a way to get ready for those places in case during enumeration proper, we have access so that we won't be found wanting. So the methodology of um, enumeration will be exactly the same thing. And then uh, about demarcating some of those places, I also mentioned it in the presentation that I already did a memo because presently we have, um, I think about 19 states where we have hybrid years, 20. So you can imagine somebody who is not, who has not seen uh, GDB, Hearing that you have hybrid EAs in 20 out of 36 states and FCT, we will think that there are so many. Meanwhile, you're talking about 0.4%. In some states, the place is not even up to one EA that you did not gain access, but you must count it as one. So we looked at it and it's in such places that we thought if actually we can go and clear those ones so that we can reduce the number of states where we have this hybrid. A place like Lagos, we're looking at is not up to three EAs where we have the hybrid. That can be cleared. In Ogun, it is Kenan land. That can be cleared. They are not security issues. So we have done it, like I said in the challenges, the major problem is fund. And the earlier it is done, the better. Because once you do it, that means you're going back to the GDB to do some corrections. And we know how these things are. We need time to do them and be able to now get ready for the census. It's not something that maybe a month or two to the census you will start uh, doing. 
Then adding another layer for training centers and MPC offices is well noted. We'll, do, we'll look at it and see how we can get it done. Need for hard copy maps for backup. We have been talking about it for a long time. In May last year, I presented a memo to the commission about it. It was approved. They asked that we should write for release of funds. We wrote last minute, they said no funds. Adia. So from May last year till now, this is uh, March. We are talking about 10 months ago. It's something we could have finished by now. Because when we do it, that means the maps are ready. When they need that, you have the need for those. We just pull them out and photocopy. And then uh, validation and verification of locality names. This one is the big one. You see that my challenge is apart from a uh, lack of funds. This is actually the second thing I mentioned. It is actually something I don't even know how to go about. I have had to go to DG, to chairman, because with each passing day, you keep getting new petitions. And in Nigeria, locality matters. They don't end though. Because what you call locality, somebody will wake up and tell you that his skin bread is a locality. You and I know that is not a locality, but they'll start writing. Somebody will suddenly come and say that the whole of this hall you said is locality A, that this part belong to B. And B will write you, following immediately, I don't know if they inform themselves when they're about to write, that this part they say belong to them. No, that it doesn't belong to them, or it belongs so, which you understand. For how long are we going to do that? So for some of them, you don't even know. In fact, at the time I told DJ, I said, maybe we should just wait after census, let them go to tribunal. Because if we continue with them, there's no end to it. There's no end. Even two weeks ago, some people came from uh, Wari South. Their issue was that, that there are three ethnic nationalities in Wari South, that their own, we call their locality only worry. And that the other one we mentioned their own is Shekiri, this, this, this. Why should their own be worry? Then the other one that they have their ethnic names. And if you look at our locality coding, those ethnic names to those ones are sub localities under worry. You understand? But they refuse to understand. So, like I said, you can see that that is a major one for me. That's why I put it under challenges. I have had to go to DJ, I have had to go to chairman. And you know, these things keep coming. So maybe yeah, after did. now, we'll still look at it and see if there's a way out. And if there's none, we go ahead and do our census and allow them to go to tribunal. Thank you very much. Can we limit this? OK, you OK, go ahead. Thank you, Director. Uh, you mentioned of staff gap as a result of the One of the mission is to organize training. Do you have a, a training work plan or methodology so that you can see how we are going to be in camp? Your support. Yes. We do. We do. We have even presented a memo on that capacity building. We did it in such a way that we do for people in the headquarters. And then we, there's a second one where we step it down, step it down to the states in such a way that every state will bring four people, and then we we'll bring them together and train them. The cascade method. All right. Thank you very much, Director Cartography, for such a wonderful presentation. Very apt. The truth of the matter is that cartography is what is selling National Population Commission now. Wherever we go for presentation, wherever Kato presents, the resources they have is a pride to the commission. Can we clap for Mrs. Ari, please? Dr. Adenuga, you have 15 minutes. And please, we have a timeline because there are other programs. There are other assignments to be done and other programs. So let us turn ahead to the time, please. 15 minutes. Timekeeper, please. Who is the timekeeper? Who? Oh. Okay, Boko is the timekeeper. 15 minutes, please. Thank you. Your time starts now, Dr. Adenuga. Oh, you are. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry.
Okay, please so off now. Are you on? Now? It. Okay. That's okay, it's working. Good morning, CTH. The director here present are my colleagues. Hello, my name sir. is Adin Recruitment strategy for 2024 in honor of a CTA, our going CTA. Now, the, this is the outline introduction recruitment approach, RRT structure, challenges, mitigation, conclusion, and recruitment work plan. Introduction. We adopted digital, digital, digital for our work. And the reason being that because of the huge material and human that is involved. And this is to ensure that a widespread application from all over the locality in the country minimize of bias and to ascertain that all qualified Nigerians are given equal opportunity to participate and be recruited. These are the set of people that is required for the sensor, facilitator and coordinator, data quality manager, monitoring and evaluation officers, specialized workforce and DQAA, that is data quality assurance assistance, supervisor and numerator, Training center manager and administrator and PES collectors, data collectors. Now, the sensor recruitment portal is an end-to-end -end portal where recruitment process takes place from beginning to the end because it's digital. This aligns with the commission aim of conducting digital sensor. Besides, it is particularly useful because of the huge number of human and rich material resources that is involved. Our advice from this end is that we should conduct a fresh recruitment. Because if you are to use the old one, when you ask people not to apply, before you know it, they will have started applying. And this will complicate the issue for us. So that is why we advise that fresh recruitment for both prior and main sensor should be done. Then public affairs department will assist in doing a proper advertisement to this effect when the SSI is about to begin and on agreed date that the recruitment is coming up. We know how people react to information in this country. Even without announcing anything, you see them saying the sensor is about to start, recruitment is ongoing. Mm -hmm. oh. Now, before we do that, the recruitment approach continue. The portal is expected to recruit applicants and manage them through processes with minimum intervention from us, from individuals. And to cater for key processes in the recruitment exercise, the portal will be upgraded end-to-end -end modules. These modules shall cater for the following users control panels, application provide details, training center selection, class management and attendance. This was, we are unable to achieve this when we did the training for the state level because of certain technical issues. Then quiz and test module, we advise that this should be put to streamline and pre-qualify some candidates. Apart from the parameter that we put there to checkmate them, then applicant ID card, post to training center and EA. Apart from posting to the, posting to the training center, we also advise that posting to the EA, should be done electronically, interoperability with the DQM, DQM platform, because they are the one to assign people to training center and the EA. Then payment module. Thank you. To avoid all the problems and challenges we encounter during the Sensor, especially in Nazarawa State, we have some people that did not participate, came up for payments. So we advise that payment module should be 
included in our in the upgrading of the portal. Now, this is the applicant administration of tests and quiz to pre-qualify the candidate or the applicants. Applicant will be subjected to quiz tests at the end of the application. That is immediately after they apply and we close the portal, everybody will ask to answer quiz or a test. Then applicant who meet the cutoff, cutoff mark will be pre-qualified beside, beside having all the previous uh, qualifications. The test platform shall be available to RRT, that is the recruitment team for verification of test scores of the applicant. After recruiting, after qualification, now we advise that a computer-based test will be conducted using jam designated centers. This will automatically be handled by the portal. This is to ensure uniformity. You see the battery. This is to ensure uniformity, accountability, and transparency. The CBT, the CBT must be carried out before trial sensor and main sensor. The cutoff mark for the test shall be decided by sensor management for different category of the functionaries. The applicants, the applicant screening and approval, all pre-qualified applicants will work, will be screened at the headquarters, state and local government. This is that to be conducted at the state and local government by the recruitment team. The RRT will work with the sensor department to affect the list of the participants. Then approved list of screen applicants will be posted to their respective training center. This is to be carried out by TCME, who, hold the, who have the sole responsibility of monitoring or posting of the applicant to their respective uh, place of work. Some of the RRT, that is the recruitment team, some of them are deficient, especially at local government level. And we are finding that they should be trained. And most of them, especially the controllers, are retiring. Many of them have retired. Though we've trained them, but some of them have retired. And this training schedule shall cover the following area: navigating e, e recruitment portal, assessing the state and edge module on portal users accessibility, understanding the modules, training center administration, quick test administration, verification and applicant ID, training center and EA posting, interoperability with DQM platform. Then again, again, payment schedule. They need to have idea of the payment schedule as well. This is not the structure for the RRT. I will go to challenges before I come back to the to the timeline. Adoption and implementation of digital technology in previous preparatory exercise in 2033, the recruitment team encountered some technical and administrative problems, challenges, late submission of approval list from state and LGS, lack of single source of communication with the selected applicants. When we did the recruitment, it started bombarding us with a lot of and questions. The ineffective inter integration of some modules, e.g., attendance, posting, and payment, then cyber attack, lack of synergy among stakeholders. We all know this. When you are going this way, officially, you see another people going in another direction, especially at the high level. Inadequate income skill of some RRT at a local government level, some control, as I said. Many staff at NG, especially controller, have retired. I put this one as a litigation. The list of the participants must be ready two weeks before the commencement of the training. Not that after three, four days after the commencement of training, you see people coming off for the same training. And this is a digital sensor. Not everybody is fast on handling of computer. Then the list, in accordance with the recommendation of special task force and approved by CTA, invitation and communication with the approved applicant for training must be done by the recruitment team. And the list must be given to the sensor department for documentation and consistency. It is the list that we have, that they should have, since we are the one that did the recruitment. Let us give them the list, the same from the state, from the local government. This is the list, we have it comprehensively. I will now give it to the sensor department for documentation. Design and deployment of all modules to be tested and certified. 
then security of personnel, personal identifiable, identifiable information of applicants, and cyber security and social of the recruitment data must be ensured. Mm -hmm. The state of reserve applicant must be clearly stated from the beginning of the exercise. What will be their role after training in terms of engagement and payment? When we did trial sensor, we put some people as reserve. After finishing, they came up that they want to pay. They need payment. And some stakeholders stood for them. They are not in the payment schedule. They are not supposed to be. They are only supposed to terminate after the training. They were told that because of the influence, they have to start them paying them, especially in all over the state. Then applicant must have unique code that can be verified by recruitment visa before payment to avoid duplication. Then appointment of competent and tank savvy RRT must be ensured. Then better payment method must be adopted as DMIS have proved to be inefficient in the previous exercise. This is to avoid error. Okay. In conclusion, the recruitment exercise will solely be implemented through recruitment portal to provide an end-to-end -end experience and help at help and the headquarters RRT will collaborate with the related respective department to ensure a successful implementation of recruitment. An entirely different payment method from Jim Smith that will verify participant name with correct account details should be employed to avoid likely chaotic situation after censor. The core mandate of commission is to enumerate the whole country. Recruitment of functionaries to do the counting and pay them at right time shouldn't be a problem. Therefore, all technical, administrative, and unnecessary human made challenges must be, sin must be sincerely addressed for the success of the sensor. And my timeline. Here we no, I wanted to bring in this. There is no link. No, it's linked. Tap the microphone here, please. I'm coming. Tap, yes, sir. Yes, I'm the microphone. I'm coming. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Adenova, for this uh, presentation. We will uh, take CTA's comments, but before then, the former revised uh, president who happened to be the uh, census, the census committee chairperson, wants to make comments. So we'll take his comments. Dr. Harry Palibo. Yes. And then after that, we'll take CTA's comments. He's not online. Okay. Alabi, document whatever question. So we'll continue until he's until he joins him. Let's see. So we'll take the TS comments. And please, the census manager sent a note. He is proposing that we don't have to respond to CTA's comments. Yes, exactly, yes. That if we keep doing that, we will not live here today. Exactly. So what we'll do is after each presentation, we'll take CTA's comments and then we'll go to we'll the next on. presentation. Exactly, yes. At the end of the whole presentation, we'll have like matters arising where you can now, if you have- We're holding another meeting where we'll discuss the presentations. Ma, uh, what the Dr. Palibo sent was, he called me and said that all CTA comments will be officially documented and will act on it after here. Okay, that's good. That must be documented. Who is taking? Who is notes? taking no It must be from here now. Okay, um, Tony. Okay, fine. Okay, so we we'll have a team doing that. Okay, city. City, please. Hello, Thank you. 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 So, um, first of all, this is something that uh, you have been in Nigeria for a very long time. So, I've become a participant of Chawai almost everything. Sometimes it's amazing how people can, how somebody as tall as me can be invisible. 
देखो It works for the center. How do you make it work for the center? So it's okay. You have to think of press it anyway. So you can turn that off. Okay. And the reason I'm saying this is part of what I have asked. So one is that many people here, but then this is people here in the past two years of people can tell me it works. They believe it's just it's a bunch of paper, plain legality that uh, let you know we have the system. But the people really get recruited, don't really have to. So, full proofing the system to make sure that it works for the purposes that it was created. It's very critical. You have to have a strategy implemented. That strategy. We include putting things you know, in place to make sure that uh, you depend on all forms of interference and manipulation so that the system can. Otherwise, it's one thing to have a beautiful system, it is another thing to get uh, the decide on something. So that is not all. The system, friend of Interference and making sure that we build the requisite numbers okay. at the year level, at the locality, locality level. So we make sure that we are recruiting, you know, adequate people at that level, knows about that level. Because here, or not some MTS are production point for the census, and we have to assure efficiency, not efficiency, but uh, sufficiency at that point. Then we build it up. We have to account for sufficient numbers and qualifications in the very energy of the agenda that we should 
very much CTA for those comments. They are well taken. And um, thank you, Dr. Adenuga, for the presentation once again. So we'll take the next presentation. And that will be from census departments from census operations. 15 minutes, please. Mm. Your time is going on. Which time, so, time when they have not connected me? Connect, start from your system now. Which system? Is this we system don't have time. We are going to be taking pictures. And I'm not going to start now. Your time is going. Thank you, but please start. Uh, give me another one. Chief Technical Advisor, Dr. Collins Opio, my teacher, Rep of a UNFPA, colleague directors, colleague MPC staff. My presentation here is on census operations which is what we're expected to do in a census taken. Census operation involves, next slide please. It involves a comprehensive systematic enrichment of all individuals and households within our nation. 
providing critical data for decision making processes across various sectors. I introduce this by saying that this presentation will explore the key components of census operations from meticulous planning phase to data collection, processing and analysis, and also we'll discuss the importance of census operation. Additionally, we'll highlight the challenges inherent in census operations, such as ensuring data accuracy, hard to reach, hard to count population, and maintaining data privacy. Census planning is a crucial phase of the census operation circle. And we know that for this census, the 2020 round of censuses, we started with what is called a strategic document, which was launched by President Goodluck Jonathan. This document allocated assignments to traditional departments of the commission. Cartoon was giving census mapping, census was giving census operation, ETC. We are to note that we are, as census departments, to follow up by providing strategic census instruments for data capture. Next slide, please. Please control it for me. And these instruments include the MPCO1 questionnaire. This deals with the building, building and housing census population, 07, numbering and household, 05, callback forms, 02, PS survey questionnaire, and then census application, part CS Pro. The dashboard also is there. The dashboard is the back end for the census operation because whatever we take from the field as census people, we stream online, real time to the back end, which is manned by my friend, the big belly, Mr. Mike. Key components of census operation. You have preparation and planning. We have EAD that has been ably captured by my senior colleague and my friend, Ms. Sarukwe. We have the questionnaire design. We have training and recruitment. We have a team on recruitment. It's a team and also a team on training. They are actually to advise. They have an advisory role on these issues. Traditionally, these are functions of census and admin department. You have census methodology and strategic plans. That was the strategic plan I said that the president launched. The strategic plan is what states whatever you are going to do. You don't just jump in and wake up today and say, today I'm giving this job to A and B. No. MPC does not belong to any individual. It's a government organization. All our fathers here are taxpayers. So whatever happens here should be guided by principles. You have the tabulation plan. That is the data processing and analysis. You have the edit specification and you have analysis and visualizations. Census planning. is a critical phase of the operation circle, laying the groundwork for a successful enumeration process, strategic decision and meticulous preparation to ensure the accurate and comprehensive collection of census data is in place. One thing to note, cartographers are the foundation of the census. Because without the EAs, there is nowhere for us to seek our uh, population data. The cartography lays the frame, the geospatial frame, where we in census department place our data. Is that clear? So also you have what is called census training. For the census training, we dealt with issues like three components, self-learning, visual sections, and content trainings. A lot was done. It was successful, but I know that one or two committees were brought in place too, to advise on how to improve on it. Nothing wrong in improving on anything. Nobody knows it all. And some of us are team players. Whoever is around to advise, we take your advice. The self-learning was implemented through a platform designed specifically for sensor data collection and digital skills development. This mode allowed participants to engage with materials in real time to gain insight 
to the training contents ahead of time. We dumped the material for them and they were studying the material. We went to the virtual training. With the materials we gave to them, we now engage the participants with trainers online. We had virtual classrooms. We had trainers who were in Abuja here, most of them, and in other parts of the states. And these trainers were now interfacing online with students in virtual classrooms. These students already had their materials, which enabled them, and it was a huge success. I wrote them a report to my teacher, the CTA, Dr. Colin Sopio, and I know the comment he made on that report. I was so proud of myself. For the first time, I saw myself as solidly technical, based on the comment from the CTA. Contact training. The approach allows the participants to interact physically with the trainers. This is the only stage where the trainer and the participants meet, but it's very expensive. We are talking of oh, close to a million enumerator. Even with our new methodology, I know Nigeria. I know where Nigeria is an expensive phase. It is the most expensive phase of the training process. Now, when you meet with them, you interface with them. We do field work. We do uh, class work. We do what you call a on a hands on. A lot of interactive training takes place, all to bring about synergy between the trainers and the trainee. We had several processes for that. With this is specialized workforce. It was a team of people that brought in to backstop the DQAs, who are the most technical field functionaries that we have. Also. A lot of things have come into place. There's an initiative right now from the presidency, which is talking about the possibility of collecting NIM as we are doing the census. Is that clear? The modality is being worked out. As we are enumerating, we'll also be generating NIM. That way, we should be able to cover over 200 Nigerians with their NIM. It will be a big achievement. So a lot has been done. Also, states of training. We have the master's training the national training, the zonal training, and the state level, which have been concluded by the National Population Commission. I'm sure the bulk of you were part of everything here. Am I wrong? Most of you are here as facilitators. Are you not? Green, you are a facilitator. The only state we had not gone to was the LGA level. That was the stage at which the postponement came. In October 2022, the master's level involved 50 core program officers and staff with requisite experience in census and survey operations and the academia. This stage of learning includes self-learning, visual, and contact. Next slide. National level, conducted in November 2022, covering 327 trainers via self-learning, virtual modules, and contact session. Zonal level, executed in December 2022, this phase integrated virtual sessions with intense hands-on contact training for a total of 4,310 trainers. Spectacular. Start for Nigeria. LGA level, although it had been planned by the Census Department, a committee, a special tax force was set off, of which as Director Data Administrator, I was also a member of the committee, to advice on how to improve on the training process. Like I said, census is not a unilateral activity. Census is a multilateral and trilateral activity. Is that clear? It's not about one person. It's about all of us. The biggest danger to a census process is an individual that wants to be everywhere. What you call Mr. Noah. Nobody knows it all. Census is by bringing a group of people, group of ideas, synergizing together. You must always be willing to take advice from other people. Training materials. Those are the census questionnaire, the curriculum, population and household. That's the handbook. Understanding census questions. Field operations manual. These are all our materials. Presensual activities. The EAD was conducted by a cartography department, privileged as 
an officer of the commission, I partook in the EAD. We did a first pretest, census department. Second pretest, census department. Trial census was conducted too. And we have the reports. Continue, please. Hard to reach areas have been identified and a committee is working on it. Next slide. Lessons learned. First and second pretest. Several lessons were learned. We have reports on it. I won't bore you with it. If you don't have, if you're not seeing those reports, come to me. I'll give you the report. There are plenty in my office. Challenges. Problem of exporting completed and retail data. ICT, you are here. I know you guys are still. Abuho, you are still working on that. Inadequate publicity. PAD, you are here. You are still working on it. non ability of some heads of house of household, thereby resulting in several callbacks. Waste of time. Continue. Lessons learned. Trial sensors. Sensors dress the hazard. We we'll talked about this that several issues which were raised right from the issue of logistics, execution plans, arrangement, training protocols, procedure, field work operations, all these were processed. The report is available. And if you want the report, also you'll get the report. Next slide. Continue, please continue. Take me to the work plan, please. Take me to the work plan. You have a listing for that now. You have a link. Click to the link. Give me the link. You know, I have a I'm technically backed. I'm not like uh, some people. Keep going, keep going. Link. Uh, okay, well, I will make the you see enemies of progress. This is not bizarre because I'm <laughs> no signal. No signal. Well. In the work plan, we, we are discussing issues about, uh, we are going to do edit spec. Okay, go, that's the work plan. But this is, I will also make, you know, my sensor department, I'm always very open. I will print out several copies of this work plan. Already it's, it's in circulation, so you can all see what we intend to do. Right from the review of sensors instruments, tabulation plan, the chairman has just approved that we are going to do a second and a, no, a third and a fourth pretest approved by the chairman of commission in New York. We're also going to do a second trial census. We are going to do several other activities. So, you know, I think we are good to go. Our only prayer is for President, Commander in Chief of Nigeria Armed Forces, His Excellency Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tunubu to make a proclamation for census 2024. Thank you very much for this. Talk. No, sorry. Thank you very much, uh, Acting Director Sensors. Tony, is that one on? Huh? Put that one off. Okay. No, so the the mic. Okay. Thank you very much, Acting Director Sensors, for that uh, presentation, and thank you for keeping within your fifteen minutes. I'm not a lawbreaker. So we'll now take uh, CTA's comments. CTA, please. My teacher. I'll just... Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 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 Thank you, Mr. I think every department, yes, sir. including all of them, I will not mention one, but I don't want to, I don't want any biases. But I think I've worked with some of them more than others, sir. Eh? And census department is one of them. Clap yourself, Nancy Bolagi. What's that called? Department is wrong with you. You know, it came later. Yes, sir. Joined us later, so. Okay, sir. Yeah, still playing catch up. Okay, sir. Mr. Bola, you're welcome. So, uh, and I say that because in any census, the census department is at the heart of the matter. Ah, for the census department, let them hear. 
After all, the sensors that we are doing, wherever there is time to the sensors department and enter the sensors department. What is the objectives of the sensors? What kind of sensors do you want? The other people, and what do we expect at the end? What do we want? When do we want to do it? What do we want to do? What do we want to include? And what do we want to get at the end? The other people merely facilitate those processes. But in the era of digital censuses, the paradigm has shifted quite significant. See, this is the old school. The new school, the digital census era, is that uh, everything, every department that is important to the census process is part of that coin. It's a multi-sided coin. Yes, sir. Because you cannot separate the route and functions of the census department, the cartography department, and the IT department in modern censuses. Yes. And so there should never be any census meeting that takes place without at least this department. Because nothing can be discussed conclusively without that. And we try to do this. This was one of the challenges when I came that uh, people prefer to hug each other on the corridor, but not during meetings. <laughs> so we had to try and bridge that and help people to also get out across the table when they are meeting on different subject matters. And I think this worked to some extent. So I'm happy with a lot that have been done there. Uh, but sir, there's still a lot that remains for you to do. Yes, sir. One of the things that uh, is not that it's not there, it's there already, but we just need to, so some of these are just filters, you know, really clean up stuff, okay? So that when we have a little more time in our hands. One of the things that has not worked well is the linkages between census department and the other critical departments. So if you are to do a, Critical analytical framework for the critical framework for delivering the census. Those arrows, if you are the center, how would you link up with IT, with cattle, operationally, technically, and otherwise? To those as a critical department, the so called service department. And in which direction is it this way? Is it that way? Is it multi pronged arrow? And all those kinds of things. This was never clear, and uh, and particularly because we have a census manager. Okay, so we have to make sure that we define our roles very clearly, so people know the operational links. So there's also no duplication of effort. So we increase uh, value for effort and money. Okay, in everything that we do. So this is one area that uh, you want to make sure you look at. Okay, sir. Uh, and, and what you need to do in relation to that is to identify the critical functions of your department, the ones that you lead in the entire census dispensation or framework. So you know these are for the census department to lead. Remember, I didn't say responsible for, I said yes, lead. Yes, sir. Like yes. I said, the digital mm -hmm. census is a multi-dimensional coin. Yes, sir. So you can't just talk about one department being entirely responsible for something because you have to draw uh, from the other departments as well. So you need to identify those. Yes. Is it, what functions do you see as those ones that are entirely being led by this? I'm sure you know them. Yes. Training is one of them. Yes. It's a, uh, you know, design or development of the instruments is another. I'm just saying, yeah. you could change that, you have the power. No, no, no. Hmm? I don't say. Uh, deployment, after people get trained, deployment could be one of them. Yeah. Okay. What about, and I'm only focusing on the pre census activities. Because I know that in the run up to a census, 
Sometimes there was a cut of war between those who are doing recruitment and the census department. The census department insisting this is our function. And other people say, no, it's not. So how do you link up with those other critical departments that are supposed to serve you? There has to be a clearly Legion defined yeah. framework that specifies specific actions that are supposed to be taken by each department that has a responsibility in delivering that particular function. This will help you a great deal for the census. Uh, then uh, I'm still on training, which is a very critical function. I know that uh, you spoke about materials being ready, I agree, largely by and large. There's always a margin. Eh? Uh, I think what is more important now is the notification of those materials. How can we make sure that we apply them to great effect? You have a well worked out modern questionnaire, very ambitious, comprehensive, particularly for the development agenda of a country that has not done a census in 20 years nearly. It's very comprehensive, it's good, and it's good and it includes almost everything that is important in this census as learned, both in the trial and in the previous census, this say including trying to stem or trying to deal with issues of census migration and so on. But the application of that and making sure that uh, during the recruitment, the recruitment people find you the right combination of skills, qualifications to administer that event. So, but Training should be a continuous function now that you have time. Yes. Particularly for any level above field level. By field level, I just mean supervisors and enumerators. But above that level, like the specialized workforce, you know, one of the things that we probably need to do is to take stock of these people above field level that were already trained and how many of them are still available, aware there. You need to have these people on your speed dial. I don't think this has been done. I would, if I were you, this is something critical that you would do. Once you do that, I know that there was a plan for what we call a mentorship program, mentor mentee program, because these are the people, and we had a framework for that. These are the people that you're going to use for that, the people that have already been trained, but they're also an asset for you in terms of how you're going to use them going forward. So it's very important <clears throat> to make sure we have these people and we know whether they are still available. I'm not, uh, what are those people called? Those people who seem to say the truth even if they don't know it. Is this, they're called soothsayers. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Those people. Thank you, Tony. Why you went through like you'll be lucky if you can be able to find more than 70 percent of them you may not find up to one third of them and the numbers can get very skewed when you look at it by locality some localities will be more affected than others so I do want to agree with you, Dr. Uh, I mean, I agree with Dr. Benuga earlier that uh, recruitment may have to be redone. But we may have to apply some sort of, uh, what is it called? Uh, uh, not that. The ones that we know, if we can do the inventory and we know these people are available, we can do yeah. some preparation. We can take an inventory first some of, people, of the okay. availability state of If we know not only their quality in terms of technical skills, yes, sir. but also their character. Okay, character is very, very important in training. So you want to do this. But in terms of continuous training, other than the mentor mentee program, I think we've talked about this before. You have 
to you have to roll out an online training program for both people, all members, all staff members of NPC, wherever they are, whether they are here or they're in the regions, but also for the ad hoc staff. And I've been talking to some of your staff members who are at the core of the development of these online training programs. I've spoken with them, I've spoken with some of my colleagues at UNFP. I'm sure that uh, Chief Teo here knows about that. And I've suggested that uh, if you are up to this, we can facilitate some sort of collaboration between NPC, your department, uh, the UNFPA, and the top national university to come up with uh, certified training programs entirely virtual for census to be implemented during this period in preparation for the census. Okay, that is up to you now to follow up and make sure that uh, you can get some help. Okay, and uh, the other point is uh, during the trial census and uh, the other things, the field operational structure was weak and flooded, if you know what I mean. There are too many people in the field. Not that they were not necessary, they were. But the roles were not clearly defined. The roles were not clearly defined. The structure was not clearly defined. So there was a lot of stepping on each other's feet or one another's feet or fighting for space and recognition and visibility and the other things that go with all that. This is something that you have to streamline. Fortunately, you are the one in charge of field operation, so I'm preaching to the choir here. This is, you have to start out this, you know, it's not necessarily the presence of people, but it is how they are deployed for effectiveness. This is very, very important. If you have people and you have conflict, because the human beings, wherever there is no structure, there will always be conflict. It's a given. We don't want that because that sends bad, sig bad signals to the public about our, the intentions of our very honorable institution. So you need to streamline the field operational structure and uh, make it stronger. Then there is uh, the issue of uh, memorization of the census date. If we had gone ahead to do the census, this would have been a problem. I can tell you that. I know that I discussed this with the public affairs department uh, severally, also with the census department, but there was just no coordination between the census department and the public affairs department on that. Memorization of the census date is particularly important if the same for a de facto census, if it is going to take place for more than three to five days. And for Nigeria, we know it will take place for more than that time. Yes. The mop up may be a bit extended. But not only that, it's also very, very important for follow up activities, most especially post enumeration survey, no, post enumeration survey. And some of these were not done also with the incorporation of uh, post animation survey team. So this is going to be very, very important that we schedule in our campaign strategy events that are meant to remind the public and help them to remember the census date. So that when PS people go six weeks later, people will still be able to remember the census date because everything that they are doing is with reference to the census that is the ability of the respondents to remember the events of the census. This is very important, okay? So, um, so Pepe, you may want to do something with that as well. I will leave with PAD, sir. Then um, the census instruments, 
And I know you've spoken about that, and uh, I know you're proud of the questionnaire and uh, the manuals and all that, and that's, that's in order. Our questionnaire has issues, eh? You know that. There's a few issues that if you have time, you may want to take another look at. Yes, sir. I also hear, you know, in the corridors that, uh, no, it's more than the corridor, that you want to add more questions <laughs> to the questionnaire. Already people are saying the questionnaire is long. Eh? We are getting so many requests. For more questions. From ministers, yes. parastatals, yes. and private sectors. Such is the popularity the of the census. just eh? sending everything to me. I don't even know how to go about Such it. is the popularity of this. Everybody wants their critical data collection questions on the census. So you have to deal with that. Eh? You have to deal with that. But listen to this one. Yes, sir. As you sort through all those requests from everybody on the census questionnaire, yes. make sure that there is no request about the census questionnaire that will convert a census, which is an, an, a statistical activity, yes, sir. into an administrative one. Okay, sir. That is a red line that you must not cross. Okay, sir. Census is a pure statistical activity. We promise people confidentiality of information provided. We cannot, we should not take any question on the census that can reveal identities of people. Okay, sir. Because then it becomes an administrative activity, and that is against the fundamental principles of official statistics, okay, sir. which the census follows to the letter. Okay, sir. Well done there. Okay, so, but what I also want to tell you is that. Uh, there are quite a few things that could be tightened up on the census, not just the census questionnaire, but the manual. Okay, see, the manual is for the application of the question, it's for the administration of the questionnaire. It's how you train, is the how. How the questionnaire may be good, but if you don't train your people on how to administer it well, you have a problem. How do we know that the people we train cannot administer the questionnaire well? By looking at the data and seeing some of the responses to some of the likely challenging questions, questions that might elicit some difficulty from respondents in terms of response. But some of those questions may also be difficult for enumerators to ask. Yes, sir. So I want to ask you to go back to the trial census data. Okay, sir. And analyze it. Okay, sir. In the context of the objectives, not of the census, but of the trial census. There are certain things that the trial census was meant to achieve. Those objectives. Analyze that data, like the question you're asking, Will, about what is how, what is the length of administration of the questionnaire in minutes? Yes, sir. And that answer was not ready because we haven't done this. So do this thing. So when people tell you the questionnaire is long next time, yes, sir. from that data, you can tell them that, but look, on average, people took 40 minutes okay, sir. to answer the entire questionnaire. In other countries, they could take one hour 20 minutes okay sir. or another country is a tech just so so you have an idea you have evidence okay to be able to yeah okay so go back and then analyze it it will tell you clearly if you look at all those things what needs adjustment you will need the question itself that's not in adjustment because if the question is not bringing the result that you expect then there is either a problem with the question or the way it's been administered or the way it's being responded to. You can see a pattern, and then you have to correct that, either by adjusting the question or by adjusting the administration instrument, which is the manual. Okay, so you need to do that. And then finally, please observe operational activities timeline. Make sure that every operational, key operational activity that you have you have sufficient lead time to be able to implement it. For example, if you are going to ask people to report for training on 30th of March, make sure that uh, they know latest by 15th of March, not the night before. Because if you tell them the night before, then you're not being fair to people. First of all, because of technological challenges, not all of them will get that information. Second, even if they do, people need to make arrangements to travel. 
And they're not sitting down waiting for census to happen. They're doing other things. Their life is continuing with or without the census. So you also need to be fair so that the people have enough preparation time and give them enough notice. When you do that, and then also it costs money to travel, isn't it? Yes. Sir. People don't always have money. So they may want to also make arrangements to travel, borrow money here and there, because they know census is a good check. They get the money, so they pay back. Huh? Yes, so you can do all this, you know. So you give minimum two weeks notice. Okay. So for people to prepare. If you don't, then you're going to experience what you experience, which is uh, by day three or four training, We're not available. just 50% of the people. Are. Then we start putting in people into the classrooms that did not go through Dr. Denuga's you know, portal. portal, because we say that there's an emergency now. You see, human beings love emergencies because then they get to do things that are flawed, and it's a coping mechanism. So we have to be very careful about it. So I'm just using the training, but there are other things that if you want to do, make sure that there's sufficient lead time notice okay, sir. for the implementation of the activity to be important, to be sorry, to be effective. Okay, sir. And of course, related documentation. Okay, sir. Always. Thank you. All those comments and uh, suggestions, they will all be looked into. We want to keep getting better and better by the day. We will take the next presentation, which will be on census training. The responsible person should department is a special task force on training. So I understand it to be a virtual presentation by Mrs. Sadebayo. Yeah. Good afternoon, CTA, all directors mm. and uh, my colleagues. I hope everyone can hear me. We have 15 minutes for the presentation. Yes, can you hear me? Am I audible? I just want a response. I'm the only one hearing you. Okay, okay. she's online. Yes, can I go on? No, don't go on. Hold on. Okay. 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 Thank you. Um, now, once again, I say good afternoon to the CTA, all yes. the rectors present, and uh, my colleagues. Yes, this is a presentation from the Special Task Force on Training for the Census. Ibukun will be changing the slide from there, so I'll just speak into it. So, Ibukun, next slide, please. Yes, the Special Task Force has been set up. Uh, sometimes uh, last year when we were preparing for the training or at the IJ level, and the main, the three objectives of setting up the task force was one, to plan the recruitment and training of supervisors and administrators at the local government area level because we were planning towards the LGA level training at that time. And then the second is to present the recruitment and training work plan for a responsive and well-arranged training with a timetable, a work plan that we was uh, that should state the risk and all the things that are supposed to be done for implementation, among other related tasks that was to be done for the local government training. 
and it was also set up to implement the recruitment and training of the field functionaries at the local government level. So to this end, the STF at that time came up with a realistic and well-organized work plan that uh, undertakes continuous updates, information to assess, and also to evaluate commission's level of preparedness for the important exercise that was at hand. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah, so the we came up with some fundamental issue that we know was quite necessary for the evaluation at that time. We had seven of fundamentals which were necessary if the training was going to be successful. The first one was recruitment. That is, there should be completed, completed recruitment exercise. And when we talk about completion, we mean that every need of every LGA should be specifically uh, be fulfilled so that one LGA does not have excess while the other LGA does not have enough. And then also adequate training centers and classrooms it's the, for all the training, looking at it that we had, we should have 40 partic participants in each uh, class so that we could be able to have all the functionaries ready and they will have class where they are going to have their training. Then the tablets and the PDAs, we know that at that time, tablets and PDAs were not enough, were not enough for the, for the exercise. So we also talk about that and uh, we make it as one of the fundamentals which must be uh, in, which must be available for the training. Then I continue with the fundamentals. Please go to the next slide. I'm now using my own slide so I might be faster than you so that you can work within the 15 minutes. Then the printed manuals, which is which should be enough for the total number of enumerators and the total number of functionaries that are going to be used for the exercise. And also all the infrastructure that is going to support the implementation of a digital sensors, which, which entails constant electricity supply throughout the training period, extension cables in classes and all uh, generators. And we also specify that 48 hours before training starts, all these things must be in place. Also, sanitation arrangements must be adequate, both indoor and outdoor toilet facilities, hand washing points, so that people will not come for training and then they go home with uh, uh, a lot of diseases and things like that. Then, security and safety. That is, security must be provided, not just provided, they must be adequate, they must be well arranged, they must be well coordinated, and should be spread out so that we will guarantee the safety of all persons and equipment that are going to be used for the exercise, especially the PDAs, where they are going to be kept so that we don't have attrition at the end of the training. Communication plan was also one of the fundamentals that was mentioned. Participants should be notified five days ahead of the commencement of the training and their confirmation and acceptance availability to participate in the training must be received ahead of time. I know that the, uh, the city has also mentioned something like that. And, and also payment arrangements. It was stipulated that there should be certainty and confirmation of money that will be paid to functionaries during the trainings. Not that after training, the uh, functionaries who have performed in the training are now waiting for their money and there's a possibility that they might refuse to go for the head count if their money is not paid to them. Then as when we look at all these same fundamentals as at that time, we look at what was the status of our readiness for the local government training. So based on the pre-census planning post assessment, an evaluation of level of preparedness across these seven priority fundamentals discourse, it shows that we were not ready for the training as at that time. Therefore, there was an urgent need to address all challenges, both human and all systemic uh, uh, issues, so that we can get on track in order to be able to deliver an excellent training of foot soldiers for the census. This was the final recommendation. Now, 
the current situation and the guiding principles that we should follow for planning for the for the census. With the census process pause, we are also faced with another issue, which is the time lag and attrition. These are other issues we also need to grapple with. And uh, in spite of this, the gift of time, which the city is always mentioning, should help us to put our right whatever we might have done wrong before. Therefore, we have these three guiding principles, which are completeness, universality, and simultaneity. Number one, every year an essay, having a supervisor and an enumerator with reserve for attrition. So that means that in planning for the training for recruitment, they must, it must follow the total number of years in each local government area, not just in each state, because we are talking about recruiting people from their local government of, of a place of stay or place of origin. Therefore, it must be according to local governments, not according to the state. Because if you do this, there some local governments might have enough, I mean, might have excess, while some other local governments might not have enough. And also in recruitment, we should also make room for reserve so that attrition can be taken care of. Universality, as much as possible, the same type of training must be given at all levels and every place. And that means that facilitators, their expertise must be spread across the entire country so that one, uh, one area will not be at disadvantage while the other area is over advantage. And also simultaneity, every state, every LGA must be ready to start training at the same time and finish at the same time. Not like we were having that some people will have finished training and then some people are having shortfall and then we are organizing extra training over and over again this way at the end of the day affects the quality of the people and of the data that we are going to collect so with that we came up with a work plan summary the training plans and there must be i mean number one is training plans and structural review going forward there is need to put round pegs in round holes training coordinators at zona and state levels should be serving staff of the commission and they should be that are trained for that purpose and saddled with that responsibility because if you look at the situation we had at the last time where ad hoc staff were used as training coordinators at zona and state levels their level of commitment was very low and we that were on the field saw so many of these disadvantage then the training structure should be hierarchical and overlapping roles should be merged. For example, training coordinate, we have training coordinators, we have field coordinators, we have training centers, managers, we, and we see a lot of overlaps at different levels. And thus, every unit, they were working independently, but they were giving the same reports. This we see is not cost effective. And at the same time, because each of them were working separately, there were a lot of quarrels and there were a lot of, uh, of uh, conflicting issues on the field. Number three, all census administrative personnel, they should be given purposive training before the master training starts so that those who are going to be administrators at different levels, we know what to do and we know everything about the census. So we have these proposed recruitment plans. Train facilities and functionaries should be reviewed for attrition assessment. Before we start training, at, I mean, recruitment at all, let us look at those ones that we have trained earlier, the facilitators and functionaries. Let's review, let's do an evaluation so that we can see the attrition assessment. So, and then evaluation of needs in each state and LG, LGA can now be presented. Recruitment exercise can now be done on the recruitment uh, platform. No, we should note this. There is need to upgrade the requirements for supervisors and data quality assurance assistance. Uh, DQM, we had already given a proposal earlier that youth corpus should be used as DQA. And, and uh, I am, we are also proposing at the FTM level that supervisors should be graduates so that they'll be able to perform the roles the role that will be given to them. Proposed training plans. So we have here the proposed training plan. We have uh, the 
functionaries to be trained, who are they, and then at what level should their training take place. There is census administrators training, like I spoke, like I said earlier, that census administrators should be trained. They shall state directors, state census coordinators, and state monitoring and evaluation. Yeah, training should take place at the headquarters. And then we have another level of administrators, the local government controllers, the coordinators, and community interface assistants. These are people that can help with, uh, with uh, community interfacing, community entrances. This also should be trained, and their training should be at state level, so that each can be trained according to the peculiarity of each state. Master's trainer. This should be recruited master trainers. Training should be at the zonal level. Facilitators training. These are recruited facilitators. Their training should be at state level. And their functionaries training. Recruited field officers. Their training should be at local government level. And then, now, to address major challenge of the presensus process pause, one of the challenges consistently flat was communication or conveyance of information for actions to be taken, you could see that there was absence of well-coordinated communication arrangements before the pause of the census uh, process. So this is the proposed strategy that we have in order to tackle this very sensitive uh, challenge. Number one, we look at the at effective communications. The characteristics of effective communication, there must be clear message. The message must be correct. The message must be complete. It must be precise. It must be reliable. And the consideration of the recipients, you should note whether the recipients will understand the language at which you are sending it. And there must be senders courtesy. If you don't have all this in place, we will still continue to have the challenge of effective uh, communication. So we have this proposed communication strategy chart where we have the chairman and the commission and the chairman census committee at the helm of affairs for where communication will go directly to the state directors, the LG controllers, the training coordinators and the field uh, coordinators. And same thing also as it is being transferred to the state also goes to the director general and to the C CM and goes to the STF, this, uh, that's the, the special tax force will also have this information which has which has passed through them to director general to the chairman commission and so as it is going from the chairman commission to the state directors it is also still being monitored by the stf to be sure that all the characteristics of effective communication is also i mean carried out and also the stf takes feedback also from the state and via onto all the others. And from the STF, information will also go to all the people that are working on the field and uh, coordinating work at the headquarters, the DQM, the tracking team, the recruitment coordinator, and all others. So the special task force is at the center of the communication strategy to make sure that every unit and operations get the right information at every, at every level. Um, so, having said that, so we try to put into place a communication structure that will involve how do, does the federal commissioners get the information? They get it from the chairman that they are responsible to, but we make sure that we have a, a follow up. And before any information goes out, it is approved by the chairman, approved and uh, passed to the director general. and. STF is sure that the correct information goes out to everyone at every time and every point. So uh, STF monitors information and structures, instructions sent to the state, and they make sure that all technical and administrative information is, co is conveyed five days, even before anything is going to be, to be, carried, to be carried out. And with that, I just... Uh, jump to all the implementation strategy. Like I said earlier, communication is very key. 
And when communication gets to where it is supposed to get to, STF becomes a clearing house to be able to make sure that everything is operationalized as it is expected. So in conclusion, is the ask for all these things to be, to be made possible. The cooperation, support, and guidance of the chairman, all the HFCs, and all other stakeholders from national to the LGA level, to the STF, that's the special tax, so we guarantee a complete recruitment process and also a successful training activity. Thank you. Yeah, okay. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you very well, Mrs. Adebayo, for the detailed uh, presentation. So we'll now listen to the CTA for his comments. CTA, no fishing. Oh, okay. point agenda. Thank you, Mr. Zakubai, for that presentation. Useful lessons and operation of my labor. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I think that uh, this presentation is shared in all the departments. Yeah. Uh, just uh, to reiterate some of the things that uh, Mr. Zakubai is saying at the beginning. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, I see many of you are not aware, especially those at the back. Uh, this is an outfit, a cross cutting outfit that is created for operational development. So that we are not functioning, we had functions, but we are not efficient. And in the run up to the field test, we need that efficiency because there are too many things going on. There are very many moving parts, and you also make sure that things are seen in order for them to be effective. Otherwise, you can take it forward and other people are subtracting. So your effectiveness is diminished. That's a one. So we can't get this out. And that's why we call it the special task. Its primary objective was to help us to deliver successful training. That is what it was supposed to do. Work with all the other functions, the other arms that were excellent uh, in all the other departments. To make sure that uh, we had successful training. Those of you who are here then can uh, remember two uh, the challenges that we had. We could not get uh, complete lists for recruitment from some NGOs or some states. And uh, if we had gone ahead with the census, not all states may have started the census at the same time. In fact, we saw some of those issues. Uh, what is that? What those principles, the uh, United Nations principles, are required for spontaneity, meaning that uh, everybody has to have the same place at the same time. Not start there, there, you know, they need to do like uh, multiple census things along this. So we are in danger of contravening some of those principles. We could make our senses look indigenous, in spite of. All the other good things that we have done. So I don't want to say too much because I know that I'm not very close with, with this committee or with this special workforce or task force. But I just wanted to emphasize because it was supposed to deliver successful training. What does that entail? Uh, successful training is uh, not just about content. There are a lot of things that fail training. And I think uh, during the trial census, I may have given a presentation or two on how to achieve effective training. And I think those slides are very good to share with everyone who needs them. It's not just content, it's not just terms of the quality of facility, but the quality of people you are training. It's everything else the, the plan, the logistics, the location, the facilities. 
and other forms of you know things that can be motivated, like uh, payment arrangements and everything. All these actually come together to make it sure that it's quality. But so we want and you know at the center of all that we want training to be standardized. The same work plan implemented the same way. Everybody. Standardized training, or what we call uniform training. In street we want the training to be uniform. But there could be slight variations depending on the regional peculiarities. Okay, it's not custom stone. If you are working in an area where the conventional plan cannot apply to the desired effect, then you're allowed to do certain variations. But that must be registered by the central authority that is managing or overseeing the whole trend. And we also want to make sure that there are adequate numbers being trained, not just by state, but by LGS. Adequate numbers, these are numbers that Dr. Andrenuga talked about. And not only that, that those numbers also took into account the dynamics that are important to the whole operation, like gender, like language, culture, and so forth. So making sure that the rule of thumb is that we must be able to make sure that there is an enumerator recruited, at least one enumerator recruited for each enumeration area. That is a successful training. And then sufficient time to ensure that the training is practical, illustrated, not just going to read slides and, you know, no. We want the training, particularly for scientists at that level, to be practical, to be illustrated. Give local examples, you know, examples that are relevant to the context and all these things. And, uh, yes, and uh, many other things. So, uh, let me say that, uh, Zadebaya, thank you for this. This is something that definitely we want to continue to work with. I know that uh, there are areas that need adjustment and we have identified some of them. I think we have discussed some of them outside of this arrangement. So we need to have to tighten those, just some tricks here and there. But this is a very good plan and it should be implemented. Uh, so Deborah did not tell me everything, but there were a lot of challenges around its implementation. They ran up to the census because there are people who felt that uh, this specialized team you know, took over their responsibilities. They said that this is how, what the CTA was using to kill their department. So, and I said, yeah, if, if you are threatened by what these people were doing, then it means you are not doing the right thing in the first place. Because if you are doing the right thing, we will not have to be able to. I am never afraid to make changes, particularly if it is in the interest of work. It doesn't matter who is begging or crying. The work has got to be done, and it has to be done right. Census, particularly Nigeria census, is too big to fail. And uh, if you stand in the way and have a way of getting you out of the way, I will, and I have, when the occasion called for it. Okay. So thank you. and. Uh, Let's keep up the spirit. Thank you. Do you want to talk to What? You want to Thank you, sir. Do you want to talk to This is well done. I can see that. I'm thinking that. I want to start. I'm going to just want to go into the third time. This is a management plan. Push it so it to the management can be close to the districts. Close to, so it can be tomorrow. The first time. So, ICT. So, you want to do this? I think you should start with DQ1. This is an operational thing. See that is opposed to.
Good afternoon, this is uh, my directors and uh, colleagues here. Uh, this presentation is uh, on the operations of the census data analysis team. Um, I'm presenting on behalf of the team. Please switch. Okay, uh, this is uh, a brief introduction of what the CDAD operations does, the structure, the activities, capacity building, the training plans, and uh, the conclusion. Next, please. The CDAT is an acronym for Census Data Analysis Team and was uh, established specifically to undertake census uh, management. That's by way of extracting the data that has been collected, that's harvesting the data, doing the analysis of that data, cleaning the data to make it uh, reasonable. And I, I want to start by saying that uh, we have what we call is in IT giggle, garbage in, garbage out. And so, uh, what the commission has been doing, and by establishing this, is to try to reduce the errors in the census by reducing quality measures. So uh, it is by no means. Um, to counter what other measures of data quality put in place is just to augment. Because the data that comes in, uh, when we collected the trial census, um, we brought the raw data here. And when some, uh, some of our senior colleagues stumbled on that raw data, uh, they almost fainted. Yes. Because the data, when it's collected in raw form, it has no meaning. So it has to be prepared in a way that can meet the requirements for which it is meant for. So it is not about cooking the data or uh, doing some manipulations, not at all. Is just to make meaning out of that data. This next slide. So the the team work in collaboration with the developers of our softwares. We also ensure that the the, the softwares we are using for the uh, data capture are of uh, quality. So we worked with the developers to ensure that all the bugs were removed and were consistent with the expectations of the commission. So at the end of the day, the data collected was to be analyzed to observe the flaws in order to eliminate errors. So the errors both in the field and after the field data collection. So um, the, the operations of the, the team, please, where data started coming, we're doing other operations, but when data started coming from the field was when we really put our, our task to test because we needed to use that data to test our operations. We also try to harmonize the two systems, the flag uh, programs being used by the commission, the census part and the sales entry. This uh, mic is, okay. These two programs were developed independently, but needed to have a handshake. So we work behind the scene to ensure that these programs talk to each other 
and passed all the variables that they needed to pass so that the, there will be a free flow of uh, resources. So uh, we did a step-by-step -step, uh, guide into the census part to ensure that it was meeting the expectations. We also used the census part and this uh, sales entry to develop the manual, the digital manual that was being used in the field for training of the field functionaries. Go ahead. So uh, the structure of the team, um, the team is made up source from Kato and the planning and research. So uh, it is uh, a combination of these teams, I mean, these departments that produce the team. The essence is that um, as the data is coming, the people from census who are the subject matter specialists, they want the data in a special way. They want it in this direction. They want it to come out this way. The people in Kato, who are the uh, the primary developers of this, uh, the EAD, okay, that data came in a geospatial way. It's a special way. So we needed people from there so that when we're discussing issues that concerns geospatial analysis, we are not uh, looking back. Then we had people from ICT who work on the softwares closely with the developers and are also developing the automation tools for data cleaning and analysis and then uh, people from planning were also having their inputs about data quality and some other aspects so um when we commence operations these are some of the things we did the building of the census uh, applications that is census part and the sales entry in a copy form. The dictionaries, you know, when you are uh, holding that tablet, there's something running at the background. It's a dictionary that was developed. And that dictionary has to be uh, clean to be consistent with our expectations. Because if you don't clean it to collect the data, it will not come out in the expected format. Then uh, the enumeration application as well, Integrating that enumeration with the census part, passing the relevant variables from one part, one uh, software to another one. And so, um, when the data was collected, this, the tri census data was collected, we needed to extract that data from wherever it was stored. And let me emphasize that census data is not is not a, a survey data. I'm not undermining the efficiency or the capacity of survey data. But census data is huge data. Globally, census data is big data. So it is not about um, you use Excel sheets or you use this and that to do the analysis. And uh, some of my colleagues uh, who were not opportune to see how this was done in 91 and 2006, assume that once you have a laptop, you can be able to do some of these processes. Please, it's not so. The data is coming is very huge. So for you to extract that data, you, read a, you need a very fast running machine. You need internet bandwidth that is that's large. Because you cannot just be using, because maybe you feel you are downloading things on your phone, so you can also download things like that. No, it's huge data, so it requires a large bandwidth. And that is why the team could not uh, move to any other place but to stay here so that we can leverage on the commission's infrastructure. Yes. So uh, we had to download the data from the uh, the cloud or from the servers into CS web, we call it a CS web, 
where we filter the data into zona and sort them according to our expectations. We now break the data into states. We we'll break that into local governments and then run what we call production runners. And this run had to run concurrently on several servers, virtual servers, not physical servers. And that is why we need a high ICT infrastructure because these things cannot be run on our regular laptops because the data is huge. So if you are to run here, you need um, maybe like uh, two years to do processing. But if you are using high-end ICT infrastructure, you can use some few hours to achieve that result. So we break the CSDB into blocks to do some, you know, select some variables. You know, the census is collected by indicators. You have age, sex, marital status, relationships, and the rest. You know, when you're collecting in the field, you don't break it, don't do it break into that. You just call a name and some of these things. But when it comes in, you have to break them into these variables so that it can make meaning. So we had to test and expect, I mean, establish some expected processing tools to ensure that uh, what we're doing was uh, in order. So these are some of the things that we undertake. We do AD specifications. AD specification is trying to, the census gives us expectations or what each question should look like. For example, if you're collecting data on sex, and we have programmed in such a way that sex comes with only two variables, either male or female. So if per adventure the data comes in and it's a third variable, what do you do? Oh. <laughs> well, well um, the good thing about our operations is uh, it's always at the end. So it is where others have taken all the time and the, all the resources, and then uh, we are left with whatever we have. The same thing with time. You use all the time to do the training, you use all the time to do the processing, and once the data come in, you are saying, we want this data in two days' time. That is our burn. It has always been like that. So we're not surprised. But these are the things that we undertake. So uh, we also do some security features to ensure that that data is secured. Because the data we're collecting is critical. If it goes out, it becomes a problem. So we have to input a lot of security into it right from the copy as it's going into the field, as being transmitted, as being extracted, and as being processed. We have to ensure that that data doesn't leave you know, from the hands of where it's supposed to be to the unauthorized hands. So uh, I've already mentioned some of the indicators that we're trying to extract the data on. Uh, fertility, mortality, disability, migration, and the rest. So, uh, we'll share the the slide with uh, the departments like the city and say so that you understand our operations. So, um, like I said, the data, the the work involved is so huge, and because of that, it requires a lot of technicalities. So luckily for us, uh, with the support of the CTA, we're able to get uh, two consultants that work with us. They started working with us um, after the trial census. We now started developing the automation tools to use for our analysis. Luck unluckily for us, uh, the, the census uh, couldn't hold, so they had to, you know, leave. But we needed them to continue because. Because uh, some of these things are things that you cannot learn in a classroom. I emphasize this. You cannot learn some of these things in a regular classroom. You have to learn on the job. So we needed them to be around. And hopefully, uh, they will come back so that we will continue the job. And we needed them six months before census. 
so that we can perfect our strategies. So we also conducted training so that we can build capacity because we need a lot of hands to undertake this assignment. So we have been conducting some training to, you know, to uh, get additional hands to augment whatever we have. So we have been doing, even right now, we are doing uh, some step-down training virtually. So this is uh, some of our, our plans, our, our training plans. Maybe at the end of the day, we can uh, share with uh, our experts who can help us to, you know. Uh -oh. so, well, so this is um, our major challenge is uh, inadequate skills in the sense that like I said, census analysis is not a regular computer work. It requires specialized training to extract that data and put it in a meaningful way to bring results. It's not something you learn in a classroom. So we need our international experts to come back with us, to join us so that we can develop these skills. People are living, people are identifying, ICT people are out in demand, so they're already somewhere already jumping. We need to add up because when the chips are down, all of you here will be sleeping in your rooms. I'll be expecting sensor result. Please, we need to train additional hands, continuous training. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Abuho. Although you took more than your allotted 15 minutes, but thanks for the presentation. While the presentation was going on, the DG walked in. So let us welcome the DG. DG, you are most welcome. I don't know if you have anything to say to us, so we should continue. Well, okay, let me just drop in and say, because I will soon be going to um, the CTA. And uh, my colleagues, good afternoon. And uh, I know I have this feeling, and I feel very good to actually be here, knowing that uh, a validity segment is fantastic. Well, I you know I saw 15 minutes for a section. Some are using it to tell people what they've done. I don't think that's the essence of a validity message or what is left or not. Though it looks like it, but the good thing is this. You are going to say what you gained within his time. That is your focus. What he assisted you to achieve. What is left undone. It's a semi-scorecard. It's not to tell us how prepared you were. In those preparations, what were the contributions of? What is the impact of the man you are trying to celebrate? It's a celebration, no doubt. But what? Who made the impact? How? And you know, I saw Mr. Abu, the one I could hear, though I was online, also realized that they're just using it as activity, your opportunity to show your class or whatever you think you've done. No. For that reason, you can be very focused. In 15 minutes, you do a lot of good. He's passed a lot of influence. I know you mentioned he brought one person. He brought the other. Where were you before he came? And where did he take you to? It's like a farewell. A scorecard. What can he be remembered for? And you know, a lot to talk about. So let's focus on that. And when you do that, it, you realize that he goes home more satisfied and if there are challenges you are saying even when you are leaving please these challenges need to be faced wherever you are going he has promised us that that he will be around in spirit <laughs> yeah in life. yeah in life if you want to actually he also promised that 
And we talked at length, and I also relayed the message to Chairman on Friday. I told, he was in the he was in my office, and I told him that because of the love he has for this country and for this work, he made promises that you, you don't find common in the UNFPA system. Giving you directives, what you could do to secure him, because because of his caliber, you can't keep him when there's uncertainty. Yeah, the caliber of person that is in Nigeria, you wouldn't know until you go into that hierarchy and say, okay, this is the man I'm seeing. I've been seeing free of charge. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to put some ladder, ladder, and you just <laughs> climb. They ask you one or two questions. <laughs> if you pass that answer, you now have the, uh, the the power to graduate to the next ladder, and those stages until you now peep and see. That's the man you are with. So let us be a little bit more focused. And for those who are going to present against tomorrow, I know you must have, some of us have done the damage already. <laughs> <laughs> yes, committed this. But we can also do what they call damage control. When you get to those areas that you were not ready to do, you know, mm, you know, this place. Yes, if you ask him questions, and he doesn't want to answer you. Or mm, <laughs> so don't teach you that aspect. But then may God help us. So for CTA is a very wonderful person, and it's good to know that he has added colors. He has turned us to superstars. We have not conducted the census, but what he has laid on ground, you can't find it easily anywhere. We have attended some seminars and conferences, workshops, and when you finish speaking. They hear what you hear from the international community. We are waiting to see that mother. That is what he has done. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much, DG, for all the comments and uh, especially for bringing us back on course yeah, yeah. because it's like we veered. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for all of that. And I hope we have taken notes. All those who are here to present, please. Don't come and tell us what is not needed here. So we take CTA's comments and they see that. Mind the DG has invalidated. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, thank you, DG, for that. And for your support on this. I do not Mr. Paul, so thank you also for that. I see that uh, you remain a good guardian. The guardian of you, but it's guardian. <laughs> census data. So uh, I know about all the other, but let me just start a little bit. Again, I think this is what the DG was talking about. This is an outfit that you don't find in countries for the same. We innovated this for Nigeria. We created that here from okay. Most countries will wait until after the census to start talking about data. But here we say that that's too late because we want the people who understand the data to be able to change the outcomes you know we talk about it because always a doctor who stops people from dying not the one tells you why people die so that's not very helpful i hear it helps some people but it's not very helpful for most of us because we want to think we are wired to think okay so, so that's what we created this. So we came together, I mean, we thought about it, and we created a multifunction team, a two-dimensional team. Because the data that we are dealing with in a digital census environment is different from the conventional data we used to deal with during the other census. So the data has uh, your spatial dimensions, the data has statistical dimensions, okay? and also other levels you know, in the data that uh, uh, we need to to, to look at them or to take into account. And so we formed a team to make sure that we could proactively understand what's going on in the data environment. So we built it into, so this is another way, another thing that was to say how completely prepared we were for the census, that we come on all basis, because we knew that we don't want to wait until the data is collected to be able to know that something is not going right. We knew that our system had some other challenges like interoperability, like other things, a few things we lost in translation between listing and integration. We wanted to make sure that we caught those 
when we still had an opportunity to stem them or if we change them, you know, altogether. And this was supposed to do that. And so Aboho is right in the way this was set up. I know they are, bit, they are struggling a little bit with the formulation at the beginning, but as you can see from the plan, uh, they are fully, you know, on top of the control of that. Yes, I do take your, I do take note of your request for additional capacity, you know, support. Yes, I know that. And uh, this is some, you know, we are working on some uh, in terms of reference, some concept for this. So this is something that uh, can continue to support. What I want to advise is to make sure that the training for this team does not have to wait for this. And then the training continues. So that by the time success comes around, there will be experts, not everybody that we have. I say, we want to do what we call proactive success data analysis. We want to understand the things that are going on proactive so that we can act ahead of them, ahead of some of the things that might bring challenges into the process, operations, and other things that can alter the quality of data, not only the quality, but also the time of data that we collect. So this is a this is a function that should continue. Again, it's another constructing function, uh, but their key responsibility is to look at the data and then be able to interpret the data in the context of operations so that the people who are in charge of different operations know what aspects of the operations they need to adjust to get you the data that you decide. That's called feedback. So that's a proactive fact. Analyze and then give the feedback, tell them exactly what they need to adjust. So, you know, so working from backwards again, from the goal backwards to make sure that uh, the process will be able to deliver the design of its own objectives. Thank you, CTA. We'll take the next presentation, data quality management by the DQM coordinator. I think she's being represented by Hawa Suleiman. Good afternoon. I'm Howard Suleiman, studying for the coordinator of data quality management. <laughs> Before diving into my presentation, I'd like to acknowledge the already established protocol by recognizing the CTA, UNFPA representative, DG, all directors present, as well as member of staff seated here. Um, in accordance to the DG's um, um, damage control, I'd like to start my, my presentation by acknowledging the presence of the PTA since February 2020. Since he, since he came, the, he was the one that, um, that pushed for the establishment of the Data Quality Management Unit. And since then, we have worked closely with him. And um, to mention one of the few things we have learned from him, is um, to number one, we learned how to implement rigorous training programs where we in the DQM we, we adopted the mentor mentee method of training, which I must say has worked um, very, very well for us. One of the key um, achievements we got from the CTA is utilizing the technology for data quality management. He ensured he, he um, persuaded us and told us the way we should, we should continue to use. Since our EAD was based on, it was science-based, we should still follow through that path and maintain science for um, using technology for data quality um, management. Also called the conducting end-to-end -end system tests. Before now, we just marched to the field to go and begin our census process. But after the trial census, which was, um, we had here very, very hectic hitches here and there. He encouraged and pushed for the end-to-end -end test, which was first of all tested in the 
PS trial sensor phase, and we have conducted several others um, after after that um, one. Then also the last one that we want to talk about is the establishment of a feedback mechanism, so that whatever we um, we are testing, if or whether it's training or end to end for whatever activity that we are um, we are undergoing ensure that you get feedback mechanism because this is very very crucial to um, the process some some of these feedbacks can be um, we can we, we can fix it all before the end of the process while some is to, was to be noted and will be attended to later having said that i will um, quickly brush to the presentation so that we will be part of what he has um, impacted on us what we have learned implemented and where we are so far and as usual at the dqm we like to always reiterate the only reason why a census data is accepted the acceptance of census data national and international is dependent on their quality so in part of because of that that's why the, the the cta pushed for the establishment of the data quality management unit and the sense of data quality it's um for the for, the quality assessment must fulfill all these points that we highlighted in red. Number one, accuracy, ensuring that whatever you have collected is accurate in the sense that every question must be understood by your enumerators and also conveyed to the respondent accurately. Completeness, ensuring that everybody is being counted. Consistency, when we talk about um, simultaneous starting the the census the same play the same time the same mode of um, data co data collection should take should be the one that's going to be established in all areas depending on the what matter what the geography system is integrity and related to its timeliness and simultaneous data acquisition all over the country to start to saying that everything must start at and end at the same time you cannot start data collection today in one region and, and start tomorrow in the other um, region. So to this end, it is important to manage the quality of the census data relative to all components. And this presentation gives us an update of the um, DQM census process, the, the work plan and target set for um, efficient, efficient delivery. Structure and operations, the DQM unit was established by um, the chairman under the description of, of the city and CM, and members were drawn from um, depart um, departments like census, cartography, M and M and E, and also ICT. So the structure is that we, um, the DQM management layers it directly with census management, and also work from the headquarters down to the local government, or let's say down to the uh, down to the EA. From, from the DQM management, the core team, the zona, at zona level, state level, LGA level, down to EA. While the operations of, this, of the um, DQM is in basically eight stages. First, we start with the map and device deployment, then the profiling, building up a household, household listing, after which is going to be that what has gone will be synchronized then we validate the data we now go back for data refetching in preparation for admission of people of persons and this activity will also be monitored via the dashboard then is then our the, the job of the dqm ends to ensure that everything has been synchronized and most often than not people think that when you say synchronization it's just for you to say that i have submitted the dqm is selling the responsibility to ensure that whatever has been synchronized has successfully going to go and sit in where it's supposed to sit to avoid um issues that might resolve that might that might come up later then for efficiency of the dqm units the workforce has been stressed uh, um, it, it it was um structured to work thus after the the, the core team we have what we call the um, zonal data quality man management where we have people working both those who are responsible for um geospatial data and those who are also responsible for um the device deployment so we have two two in each zones we now have the state's data quality manage management. We all we have 40 of them in number. 
and we all know that we have 37 states and the so 36 states and the FCT. So we are having 40 there because there are some states that are that are big and we consider it is too big to be manned by one person. So we put two people in those states. Then we have what we call the focal data quality management area. The FDs are people that are responsible for certain um, number of EAs. And it was done in such a way that each each focal data quality manager does not have more than a thousand EAs to um to to man. Then we now have the last but not the least, the data quality um, assistant, data quality assurance assistant, who we know basically as a special specialized workforce, SWF, that was they were recommended to be converted to the DQAA for efficiency and to work closely with the FDQM to solve some technical um, issues. The following are what is expected as deliverables from the data quality management units. First of all, they are supposed to assign a mission area to, to every um, um, functionary, so ensure that all those EAs have a tablet that is going to be used to work in them. Having done that, you provision the tablet via the mobile device management and also function, um, profile the function and ensuring that each functionary has his or her own unique tablet, unique code and area of assignment. After which the household listing begins and the DQM is responsible depending on your own schedule to, to give us daily reports on the household listing. The FDQMA gives the report on its FDQM area while the state gives for the whole state and the zonal reports back to the headquarters based on the zonal report validation report and based on the re report from the validation we go back for field checks which the reports are expected back down to material retrieval and data backup part of what we learned from the lessons from trial sensors it was at the last minute that some people were asked to call to go back to go and back up data because it was seen that it was not um it, the, the data was not properly synchronized um, then the process updates as of um, today, so far so good. The DQM operations have been categorized into three. We have the recruitment having 120 or 1,330 DQMs that have been recruited and trained. And the training also, we can we say it's on pause because of it's not been fully established. We have trained the 1,230, but the DQAA has only, they've only been partially trained. And just first um, level. Then the last one is the data collection application, which up till now the um, functionality and stability test is incomplete. Um, then to to buttress more on the process update, during um, CT has been mentioning gift of time, so we we try to utilize that gift of time by reviewing the DQM process and testing five subsystems of the. DQM. This was done in November, so between November and December 2023, and the total personnel that took place in that took part of this um, exercise were 339 members, of both from the headquarters and the state level. And the subsystems that were tested, the tested were DQM workflow, the map deployment, automated profiling, device de deployment, data collection applications. Out of these five, we successfully tested for apart from the data collection application which i earlier mentioned that um up till now the functionality and stability test is um incomplete and the reason why this could not be tested during this um review was the unavailability of both um applications then specifically for the census part there was a server downtime then the key recommendations from this um review uh, as follows, installation of WPS in all SWF tablets, then the LDA recruitment officer should be trained to understand basic DQM process as they will play a crucial role in, in assisting the DQM to carry out their responsibilities. And also the LDA recruitment officer should also um, be, be, be computer literate so that he or she can assist in profiling DQM assisted by the DQA, as earlier mentioned, to provision all tablets to reduce the risk of enumerators inefficiency and optimize accuracy. 
core members should be used as DQAA. At least we all know that we have core members serving in all states. And a core member who is a graduate, we, it's expected that he or she is tech savvy. He can be able to help in one or two things, which is going to make the process um, easier. Then adequate nesting of all functionaries. That means that we should, we should, it should be stated clearly the chain of command, who reports to who, what do you do, and communication, communication, communication should be carried out um, as and when due. Comprehensive stress of the data collection um, applications, after which we we'll, we'll conduct an end-to-end -end system to 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 confirm that um, stress um, um, st stress of the application, and lastly, update the DQM manual and develop a DQM handbook during the review process. Some things, some processes um, changed. One of which we realized that you know before you go out for those of us who have participated actively if you want to go for field practical we send out um, um google forms to ask the people there either in moderator or training center management to give us gps coordinates via which we will now check from here and send eas for practical but many a times there has been delayed due to incorrect input of this um, um numbers which delay the whole process so we now dive into existing resources and um, check the link, the ArcGIS Pro, which the Commission has already pro um, procured for the census activities. And you made use of one of the functionalities, which is called Field Mapper. It's an automated way that every people can pick up this GPS location and send it through um, mail. Once, once, you, once you install the application and you pick it, you submit, we receive it at the back end of the ArcGIS um, um, Pro. So that's one was it, 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 it's new only those who participated know it so there's need for us to update the manual and also have a handbook that within a glance they can know what and what um to do then after out of the train and um, the review we also um, identified some training needs what and we have categorized it in two one is dqm based and one is um gis the DQM based is one that, that solely concerns those who are going to serve as dqm during the census while the GIS base are the ones that is recommended for those who are going to take part in the, every other census unit, because of if we are if we if we need we need synergy and the census data as CTS belongs to everybody. So for us to work efficiently, everybody needs to understand the technology that is being used. ArcGIS Pro is one, and the cartography department has um, successfully conducted that one some months back for for them. Um, representative from other departments, then system management, GeoAI, and GIS business analyst. The GIS business analyst is not business as we, um, not business as we buy and selling, but for you to know your role and your responsibility when it comes to system um, management. Then this is the timeline, which um, I can say, we are, according to November, we, have, we, we prepared this a long time ago, we, can, we are late. The first quarter targets money, um, on training the zonal um, manage, zonal DQM managers when we train all of them for what they are supposed to know. Then the second quarter is dedicated to testing all our application and um, tools, while the third quarter is targeted to test testing all the tests for that test, testing and training on site of our uh, functionality that should be that will work and also partly. Um, participating in what we call the census training support services, where the DK will be, so, will be supporting a particular um, census unit. Then, lastly, the fourth um, quarter is also um, um, the okay, okay, census training, then for census and mop up. Then we have DKM who will provide support services for the PES and also take part um, partially in as a support as a support unit for census data analysis and dissemination. And in conclusion, we'd like to reiterate that there's need to integrate targets at the time of other departments and units to and unit plans for optimal, effective and efficient service delivery. Thank you.
Thank you, Nawa, for the presentation. And thank uh, you for quickly adapting to what the comment of the DG. That was quite fast and good of you. City, we need your comments. For me? Yeah, you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for that, for that you always you always behind you. Thank you. Thank well you. Well done. The, so this so is this another, another outfit that, that uh, we created from scratch because, because of the peculiarities of conducting sensors in Nigeria. Okay. okay. So let me just start by saying that uh, the way that the Nigerian census is designed to be implemented without the DQM function, you cannot have the census. That's how important it is. You have to redesign the census. You see, there are other things that we created, but uh, if you don't have them, the only difference is you'll have a bad census, isn't it? because they are created to add value. This one is not just created to add value. This one is a, is a crucial part of the implementation structure of Nigerian census. Without it, you cannot even have a bad census. You won't have the census. So it is one that all departments should pay close attention to, make sure that uh, you understand what they are doing. And of course, they are linkages with uh, your departmental functions so that uh, they can help you to attain effectiveness in whatever it is you're trying to do for the census process. And uh, I think I'll try to explain that just to maybe emphasize. So when I came to Nigeria, I was told that uh, most countries would have, the field structure would be, you have enumerators and then you have supervisors. And some countries have both a supervisor and data quality, you know, managers or editors. They call them, you know, editors. I think so, okay? Field editors. So they look at the data that is being collected by the enumerator and they certify it reasonable before it can be transmitted. Or in many countries, the supervisors do that. They do more than just uh, manage the operations. They also look at the data for each of the numerators within the jurisdiction and uh, certify the data as of recent quality before. But in Nigeria, I was told that cannot happen. The supervisor cannot see the data because of uh, certain challenges, you know, learned from previous censuses. And also it had to do with uh, the way we were deciding the census to work, because that would mean uh, appear that the IT people know this story better than me. So that was one. And then two, two, for Nigeria census setup, the provisioning of the tablet especially was a tall order, especially if you had to go the conventional way. Some of the countries that have less than 100,000 tablets, if you go the normal way of provisioning your tablets, putting, uploading the applications and everything, will take a minimum of three months. So you can extrapolate that for 800,000 or 600,000 innovation areas. So you're talking one and a half years, time that you did not have minimum to be able to do that. So we had to devise a way of making sure that uh, the tablets can. So the technicians came up with a way in which this could be done in the field. But because this is both new and decentralized, so devolved, and will be done away from the managers who know what should be done, because it will be done in all the LGS and will not have, you know, qualified man people to manage this in those areas. We have to make sure that there is an outfit that can monitor that. The liability of newness is new, 
So we have to continuously monitor it to make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to do. So that those two things, in addition to others, making sure that we put a structure that can tell us something about the quality of data being collected because we remove that function from the supervisor. And also making sure that uh, our tablets were not only, you know, provisioned on time, but that indeed there were no other challenges. You know. And of course, the whole issue of field data and policy management, you know, as a data got collected. So we created this. The conceptualization of it was uh, fairly complex at the beginning, but the team in charge of this or responsible for this, you know, uh, picked it up. And uh, they worked very hard to internalize this. And I think I can say that uh, the system that we have now has demonstrated during the trial census. And of course, the adjustments that I know have been made to the process uh, since the trial census have uh, more than guaranteed successful implementation of this particular outreach. And I think that I uh, agree that uh, you probably need some element of capacity building. I know that uh, you have institutionalized the mentorship program, the mentor mentee program. Any department who wants, that wants to learn how that is implemented can happily go to DQM and they tell you how because they're implementing that. Yeah, but uh, any additional technical capacity building that you may need. It's not just technical, you also need management capacity because you're essentially managing field operations. The end-to-end -end data production pipeline from the provisioning of the tablets to getting data on the dashboard, extracting it and making sure that it is intelligible, that it's not gibberish. Because that's what you're monitoring and that nothing is getting lost in translation. But it's working in collaboration with CDAT and other outfits to make sure this happens. It's a big responsibility. You definitely need to make sure that uh, the team is fully capacitated to be ready for that function. As I said, without DQM, if you remove the DQM function from the Nigeria census design, then you need to redesign the census because you cannot proceed without it. So it has to, you have to make sure it is your best interest rather that uh, the DQM function is effectively implemented uh, to be able to guarantee you a successful census process. So thank you very much for that. And um, what was the other thing? Yeah, I think that does it for now. The other things we can always discuss uh, outside of here. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sufi. Knowing that uh, that DQM is very close to your heart, I was just telling myself, hmm, CTM, I just give us 50 points. Uh, <laughs> but thank you so much. Uh, all the comments are well taken and um, educative. We will take the next presentation, which oh, will sorry, also be sorry, the last one. Quick question to DQM. Do you have the inventory of your Food soldiers, do you know their status, the ones you have trained? You do. Okay, good. Thank you. So we're taking um, ICT operations by acting director ICT. Good afternoon, the CKM, the directors, and my colleagues. I see the operational operations for 2024 census, a validity session, presentation session for the CKA. In line with what the DG has, has said, I want to invite the staff who has worked closely with the CTA to do the presentation. Good day. 
um, everyone. I want to stand on the existing protocol. Um, um, just to speak through the voice of our new acting director on this uh, particular topic. And I might not speak a lot from the presentation because it is in line with, you know, how the presentation was going before talking about what we did and all of that. But since this is more of a celebration of someone that has been there to the progress and the, pro um, the level that we have gotten to in the ICT department and the census, we just want to talk a little bit about what the city has helped us to achieve as regards to where we are now. So, um, to give city because the DG mentioned something about the scoring system. You know, what this is we're going to score what the DG, what the city has done for us. And I say, I'm going to give the city a 9.5 over 10. I know he will. <laughs> yeah. And um the point five would be because um there was a meeting who he was supposed to set up for us, which he still owes us. And uh, we'll talk about it later. So so I, permit me to give you this. <laughs> this girl. so um just to give us a brief overview um when we were planning for the census uh we had no idea some of the things that would face it of course you know that this was our first digital census for nigeria and we needed somebody with that pedigree and expertise and the cta was that person for us when we had issues around okay we are talking about 800,000 tablets. How does, how would this work? CTA gave us numerous advices on how other countries have been able to go about it, mitigate it, and had a successful census. And we took those advice, we took those words, and it has really driven the success of the previous censuses we've had, which is the trial census, and even the last, the pretest before the trial census. Those were all a product of the advice we got from the CTA from the expertise that he brought in from UNECA, which came in and it really helped us beef up our ICT infrastructure in terms of our servers, security, operationalization of our, our staffing, everything. We got, we got a good, will I say, helping hand through his advice on that. Also, when he even mentioned something that was really a big problem, which was deployment of the application to 800,000 devices. This was going to take us years. And we listened to some of the advice and we had a lot of back and forth with the CTA to come up with an idea that will allow us to do this in just mere weeks, something that would take no months. Through his advice, we went back home because he kept pushing us, asking us those questions. Are you sure? Are you sure? So he made us think, research, do our homework. And we came up with something revolutionary, something that even other countries might envy um, when the census commences. So. So I to present, I know that uh, the presentation has already been um, written down, so we can just as well look through what we have, so we can be up to speed with where ICT is as of the 20, this 2024 round of um, the proposed census. So, um, of course, we have set up valedictory messages, and we can just get started. So in line with... Um, the mandate given earlier this year from the DG about our to-dos or how we tend to run the department for the 2024 round, we have put together this presentation to talk about the various tasks we need to take on or we need to look into to improve the overall posture of the commission and the IC department. And for me to say, to say this at this point, we are undergoing a rebranding, a strong rebranding from our operational, operational um, uh, posture from our staffing, from our tra uh, quality of training, and even the way the department functions, our workflow, we are rebranding all of that. And this is thanks to our acting director. And um, we want to focus on a few things here. So can I, we don't want to go through because I have a short time, <laughs> go through introduction. So the first, the first um, entry points the IC department want to look into is our website. It's, it is our, it's the first interface the public has with the commission. It's the first interface that anybody that doesn't know anything about MPC would come to to see what is going on. 
and we realized that there is a lot of gaps and we have decided to restructure some of the um the behaviors and the outlook of the website to reflect that so we have the structure the content the services the security and the email service these are the these are the components we have under the website so in adherence to the NIDDA, because our governing body in ICT is the NIT, is NIDDA, and there's a standard they set for what a website should be and what it should look like, and we are trying to adopt that in 2024. Also, um, for those that might not know, we are turning some of the commission services to revenue generation, um, what I call it, services. So recently, we signed a public-private partnership with a third-party company that will help us to handle vital registration, which would then uh, result in us being able to, um, we like to say, consolidate and raise revenue for the federal government. And we want that particular feature to be on our website so that apart from the census being our focus now, we also have something that is running that you can say, the public can say, okay, they can do their better system on debt and ETC, and they can be able to assess it easily through our website. Of course, we're focused on security, being that we are now handling something as large as that. You, you'll be collecting uh, PIIs, that's personal identif identification information from the public. You want to ensure that that is very secure. So if you're registering your child, you don't want that data to be lost. So we're focused on security on that. Also, we are now giving every staff of the commission their own official email. This is also a mandate from NIDA that um, we should not communicate over your regular Gmail and Yahoo email. So we are going. We're going in that direction too for the 2024 and going forward. Now, we want to talk about our largest assets that we have now in the commission and going for which is the data center. As we all know, um, the commission has approved and has already, uh, there's the groundbreak and all of that has happened for um the data centers and we have two major data centers that have been commissioned not commissioned yet but are in the works of uh, in terms of construction they are still being um, developed or like say built but i want to speak a little bit about what that is for so the commission has this massive infrastructure one of it is in kaduna and the other is in headquarters here our new headquarter office mabushi and we have two others in this building we have one, which is which I would like to term a server room in um, the ICT office down here. And we have one behind you, right uh, in this cubicle right here. We have servers everywhere. Um, why do we have that? National Population is a large organization. And we... Um, demographic data, vital data, and, and any kind of data, we want to be able to hold it and own it. We don't want to keep paying third party um, services to keep owning our data for us. We wanted to have this facility here. And we want to be, we are proud to mention that um, one of the data centers is at 80% completion at this point. All that is left is just minor configurations and just to beautify the structure. And then the one, the second one is currently at 40%, which um, work is still being done to complete it. But I just want to assure everyone that I think, I believe, speaking with the voice of the IC director, that we want to say this, um, the data center in Kaduna, or the 80% complete data center would be ready for the census. And um, we have broadband connectivity. Now, what does this mean? We we have internet supplying, we have um, what I call it um, ISPs, internet service provider, bringing internet into this building, and we have three of them: Galaxy, MTN, and Airtel. And this year we plan to extend their contract. They have been good to us, and we believe that they have um, they have done a good job in terms of internet uptime. And we this year we are looking to expand on that and still keep their services running going forward. Um, computers and tablets. I believe that um, some of these things will be covered by the asset manager in the next presentation, but I want to speak about what we had planned for the first quarter of this year. Um, being that the tablets have been in storage for more than eight months, the ICT planned that we would 
visit these facilities where the tablets are stored because we store them at the point where they will be deployed closest to the users of the tablet, which is at state level. So we notice that these tablets have been in storage and we don't want a situation where we get close to the sensors. We now realize that these tablets might have, might not be working as expected. So we plan to do a drive to look at what is held in storage, look at what's happening with them, test their condition, and also take the opportunity to see if we can begin some sort of provisioning because we don't want to get too close to the sensors and um, there are certain behaviors we don't expect so we want to take while we are checking the pdas to ensure that they are still working and everything is still going as planned we want to ensure that some things are tested for instance does it charge correctly the sim cards do they work as planned we install a few applications and see how they function to ensure that we have not wasted our time because at the end of the day we get to the sensors date and the pdas are bad we know there's no i can't tell you the damage <laughs> of that and of course we plan to develop database to keep all of these um, records intact so from anywhere in the world you can be able to check and see the status of all the deployed uh, devices and their statuses um cloud storage so we'll talk about cloud storage um we have a running service with microsoft azure basically we have a data center on the cloud and we plan to retain that in this going year because this is also an advice i'll give that a credit to the cta where he advised that you know we should consider using technologies like this because at the time where the data center was not ready we needed a way to continue the census and this was a good innovation and it's we plan to still retain this particular component so um we talked about okay some of these are just networking within the building power backup we also plan to basically fix the power backup because we as you can see now uh, the light is gone the aces are not on so some batteries and some stuff need to be fixed in order to ensure that we have adequate uptime for our services both the server room and the run the office in general the running um, of the office in general we want to um, get back to that um something interesting data harmonization this is a uh, we're talking about integration with nimc so i believe um we, it was spoken on earlier so part of what we are working on now is how do we integrate directly with the nimc during the census because a a matching order was given that as you are going to feel to enumerate people why don't you think about also capturing um them for or, or running them for nimc to get a name number so we're actually in talks with and we haven't formed um what, what do you call that thing again <laughs> yes we have formed committees to for that particular purpose so discussions have started in fact work has even started towards this particular um um work um what do you call it again <laughs> this thing assignment so that is happening now and also we are, we are looking at the past censuses now it is very interesting because part of some of the lapses we have now is because we haven't been looking too deep into what we already have on ground. So we're looking at our past census and surveys and how that can improve the 2024 census. I just thought to mention that here because this is also a very big um, project to undertake. Um, capacity building. So fortunately, unfortunately, we're supposed to start our capacity building, internal capacity, capacity building exercise today, where the department plans to train um our staffing to ensure that we're up to date with you know what is what is trending ict changes every day you sleep you wake up it's a brand new it's a brand new thing so the department plan to start the, uh, its internal training on various topics on computer hardware troubleshooting network and cloud engineering and cloud technologies and etc and um also leverage on our partner our sister organization ndp ndpc so that we ensure that in all these things we're doing, we we are still adhering to the data protection uh, policies. Uh, okay, so our activity work plan is available. The issue is it's, I have to open an, a whole new link, but I don't have the time for that, so I'll be sharing that with everybody. So what are our challenges? We have lack of cooperation with other uh, with, between departments that hinder the process. 
hopefully this our new rebranding and structure will be able to fix some of these things we have we most of our it based projects we lacked control which didn't always uh, work in our favor um ICT lacks budget to execute some of these things, some of the projects we have planned. Uh, we have, um, of course, inadequate capacity to manage some of these projects and then lack of leadership support. So these are it. And we have some mitigations. We don't want to bore you with problem. Not, not every time, problem, problem, problem. Let's give you solution. <laughs> so we have some suggested solutions. We want to build trust among colleagues, solicit for management support approval for the implementation of ICT project. Allocation and release of ICT budget to the ICT department to execute um, some of the ICT projects. They want to be able to fund advanced training. Um, lucky for us, at least this the number four. There's some there's some chat and there's some talk around it, and I think uh, that would be that would come to next. Recommendation and conclusion. Of course, training, training, training. I think everybody has said it. We will just say it again. We need training. We need to be trained on what. Um, various methodologies, tools, workflows, and processes. So, we'll, like I said, the detail is will be shared to everybody. So, just to conclude, thank you very much. I hope I'm to squeeze IT. We can talk for hours. Squeeze everything. Thank you, Ma, for allowing me to chat. <laughs> Thank you, ICT department. Although you took more than your time, you did. Well, thanks once again, at least for the presentation, which was uh, well delivered. So we'll hand over to the CTA for comments. Thank you. Thank you, Mecca. <laughs> uh for that presentation you never you never you never disappoint so uh, so um i agree entirely with that and uh, it's also a very innovation field thanks as i did this time other than not like before so there are a lot of newness isn't it uh that uh, we have to keep in view for nigeria one of the key challenges and the biggest for digital sensors is data safety and security even before you come to the other things if we get around to collecting them and i think uh, the ict department has been very clear about this from the beginning something that uh, we replayed, say that, you know, we retreated quite a few times. And uh, I am happy that uh, some of the systems that we have set up are really trying to deal with that. Uh, if we had done the census as originally scheduled, we never would have had this. And uh, our <laughs> that means would have been too open for anybody who was interested but i think now with the gift of time you have been able your team has been able to institute most of these things uh, that this mentor that we said that, that, that don't tell them where you are uh, recovery strategy disaster recovery strategy locations are don't tell them don't tell them one is there if you know what I mean. Yes, some of this should really remain confidential. Okay. You know, in, you know, in some countries, you may not know this, and I know it's also sensitive in Nigeria. The people who have the password to thanks as data, like the ones that we are going to collect here, to get abducted so that you make some changes, especially when it is close to a political process. I'm not saying that yeah, we'll do that. you're past that. The directions are over. But in fact, this, this happened, okay? You say, okay, you have to change this, that, that. You know, data now, particularly for African countries, no data, no development like that. People from your own government, okay? So 
people want numbers, even the ones they don't have. So you should not even look good to know who is in charge of one sometimes outside of this place. Okay. It's also part of the security and safety of the entire data collection system. I'm saying this with a light touch, but it's very, very serious, especially for here. And you agree with me, you know, some of the challenges you had with the 2006 census when you, had, when you had data processing centers in various locations, a lot of mistrust came around because of what probably happened or what people thought happened in those data processing centers that they knew little about. So we want to make sure that uh, we run what I call a robust and transparent data management strategy, data capture and management strategy for, the, for this census, because it is one way of uh, carrying everybody along and getting them behind the process. Make sure that uh, they trust the process. And if people trust the process, they will have no choice but to accept the results. So it's a big part of the results acceptance strategy to make sure that the processes are clear. I yeah, the other the security is a more encompassing one. Um, the end-to-end -end data production pipeline. This is, I know there are other people who matter to the process, DQM, and, but ICT, your role is very critical in this. Making sure that uh, the system that is supposed to capture the data in the field is ready. So even though IDP, DQM are doing provisioning or the deployment of the applications and the tablet, but I know ICT people are there. That's why they are also there. They are so ICT is already part of that process to make sure that uh, the deployment, you know, is successful. Because if there is no deployment, then the numerators will open the tablet and realize that there is no map or there is no questionnaire. They cannot launch it. It's phased to launch and all these things. So I'm talking about the process that starts there. Okay, and uh, so it's the data collection part is the data you know uh transfer is the data querying either through the dashboard or any other means that we have whether it is the CDA team asking for raw data so that they can subject it to some quick analysis or just the dqm wanting to look at things on the dashboard to know whether look at the key performance indicators and see whether we are moving along well to to that and then to the the storage, all these, uh, you know, inbuilt uh, data safety and security measures, you know, you know, that kind of the mirroring, you know, that kind of thing. And then all the way to extraction, making sure that uh, we really are extracting the right data. So all these LinkedIn systems, okay, you know, that kind of, so, I, so for you, it's bigger than the DQM end to end. You assess all these systems, LinkedIn systems that you have to make sure it works. We had problems with those in the run-up to the census process, and uh, we never had a platform to fully test them. So even when we did a trial census, we were not very sure if the mirroring worked. Because it's supposed to be real-time, or near real-time, isn't it? As the data gets stored in this, it should also, it should also have a copy in the other one. So you should be testing that system to make sure that the flow is as it is. This is those balancing that we have spoken about again and again. I know that we talk about it theoretically. I'm not so sure that we have uh, really experienced it practically. And we were supposed to do this during training when we have all the 600,000 or 800,000 tablets functioning and then trying to see how our system would behave and whether, in fact, that balance, you know, actually works. So, 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 so there, there's a lot. There are a lot of moving parts, okay, in the from your the end, the beginning to the end, okay, and there are a lot of interoperability nodes. Some of which we have uh, certified as functioning, and some of which we have not. I don't know what 
dafür sind. Und das ist auch so ein Teil der Small Steps. Ich möchte sagen, Qualität wäre ein Teil. Of the, you know, that entire data production pipeline from capture to extract, to make sure that it works. And that everything in between work that is supposed to be ahead of the trial census, if that's going to be there. You're not going to the trial census before, before you have a mini, at least one or a few mini tests to make sure that this system operates. This is very, very critical because if anything goes wrong, in that entire system, we will not be able to tell whether what we are getting at the end is complete or not. Because of this very, very long, these bridges that things have to pass through, these other things that tap into our data. You know, you can set up a system to aid, but then it's abstract. And if you don't monitor that close, you'll never be able to know. So for me, I, I want to suggest that you have to have more than even multiple tests the system to measure that they want. And then lastly, is uh, the E function. These are digital sensors. So every aspect of operation is supposed to be digitalized. So there's supposed to be an E intervention. So the E function, for every key sensors operations, those E functions. Uh, I don't know how much, well, you know, how much, in, how much, I sit in, in each of those. I know there's M and D, they have their own key functions. I don't know uh, whether ICT have them set that up. Uh, TCM is a training center and that administrators, they have a new function. The procurement people have a new function, but the finance and payment system and arrangements. So every aspect, every key operation in the census has a new component, at least one new component. Can ICT take the lead with those and make sure that the, all those key functions of various operation mechanisms are reviewed and that they actually meet the standards. Finally, you're using a hybrid data capture system. The hybridized, uh, you know, sensors by the CS Pro, you know, and this is a beautiful thing if it works. If it does not, it will be a scandal. So given how far we have gone with this, we must make sure that it works. But we are going, and I say this before, we are going to have to demand, the international community will have to demand, demand what I call standard operating procedures for licensing, okay? For the certification, let me call it a certification of a system that can be able to capture data of this magnitude, just like CS Pro. You know what that's the proper documentation, so even the health menu, you have to know what the system is, what the system is doing. There has to be a health menu, you know, all these things. I spoke with the developers about CS Pro and it's already available. The one that is not there is the success part. I spoke severally with the developer about this, and I'm sure that uh, is working on that if it hasn't already fully worked on it. But this has to be there. It is in your best interest. Otherwise, if you go on with a blind with a system that only you know about and other people cannot verify, they will not believe you even if you are correct. They say that we don't know what, and this is what people have done. I this system, you know, by the way, and this system is is still there because I supported it. People wanted me to cut it down because they did not believe it was. I say, I think it will work. And if I'm here, I make sure it works. And I think it can work. But there's still work that we have to do. If I, so I put my neck on the chopping board for you to make sure that there could be something beautiful coming out of Nigeria census that other countries would want to borrow. And they get intrigued when they hear about this system, the hybridization. But you have to have. Because the next question is, so do you have any documentation on this? I said, we're working on it. So please work on that. Finally, 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 contingency measures, contingency plan for data capture. Right now we have only one, the hybrid plan, isn't it? And 
pliability of newness. If something goes wrong in any part of that plan, we don't have a census again. And that plan may work for some parts of Nigeria and not for every part. You know that. Uh -huh. So contingency plan, plan B, plan C. If right now the enumeration, you know, copy for enumeration launches on the census part, eh? it means if the census part does not launch or something like that, isn't it? So these kinds of things. So that could be one plan. This is our main plan, and we want to make sure that uh, that one is uh, sanitized properly. Yeah, but then we also have to have a fallback plan. A fallback plan could be, because this system, one of the challenges we have had is the interoperability challenge. They work very well as single systems. Census part on its own, on its own end, and CS on the other end. Handles statistical data very well, the other one handles spatial data very well, the listing of water. But every time we bring them together, there are challenges. So is also is there a possibility that we can also use them separately as separate standalone systems? If that would be better than the hybrid, and what does that mean? And plan C could be a plan for the hard to count areas or hard to have conventional kinds of measures they can be used. You had me asking the director, Captain, this is part of what I had in mind. If there could be different um, operational strategies for the hybrid in measurement areas, what I had in mind. I don't know if you can change anything, but normally what changes things is the operationalization. Because then the person has to go a next step beyond the con to operationalize. And this is where they are normally contextual differences. We are looking at areas, uh, for instance, areas where you don't have proper internet connectivity. Mm -hmm. There will be there. Uh, People here in Abuja sometimes you don't have that. Or you don't have power, you cannot have power for days, and all these things. Those non conventional areas. Can there be another strategy tried and tested and ready to launch in case of need? That's where I give you thanks. Thank you, City. As always, you've given us food for thought again. There's every need for us to ensure that your head you put on the chopping board on our behalf remains in place. Um, I will call for two comments from two people. Just two, anything more than two we can take tomorrow. If you have any comments, can you raise your hand so that we'll take them just from two people? We're all good to go. Nobody has any comment because we want to leave, huh? It's okay. Okay, somebody is for copy. And I've seen that uh, from what I've seen from my colleagues, the different things or units set up and uh, the practicalities of whatever we have been able to do in the field. At least this impact on us has actually defined us as individuals and even as uh, an organization. We have received a lot of award out there, not just because of what we are able to do on our own, but because of his impact, what he has done, the encouragement, the, the, the knowledge he has embedded in us. I didn't learn from him directly, but at least I've learned from my colleagues who have been said directly from him. We just want to appreciate you, sir. And from your last speech, man, is something else, or the, this last speech we're just giving is something else. I pray, pray God will go with you wherever you want. Continue to give you more knowledge. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
Thank you. Um, let me use this opportunity to thank the CTA for being there for us since February 2022, guiding us, giving useful advice. And um, for all those who worked closely with him, and even those who did not work closely with him as a coffee, we have all learned a lot, a whole lot. You know, sometimes along the line, some people will get angry. CTA said we should do this, we should do this. But you find out by the time you finish doing that, you are a better version of yourself. And you know that what he asked you to do will add value to the whole process. So CTA, thank you so much. And for being with us since morning till now, it's not easy to see through. You were here by 10 a.m. and you are still here. Most of us came late and have left. But you sat through all of this. So thank you so very much. We will miss you greatly. I want to also thank everyone, all the people who presented and all those who sat through to listen to the presentation and to let us know that we'll continue tomorrow. We did not take two presentations for today, reasons being that time is far gone. Most people will go with staff boss, a lot of people are tired, and this place is also very stuffy. So I want to, to plead with us that we'll be here by 10 a.m. tomorrow, so that we'll be able to take the two papers we did not take today, and then the rest we have for tomorrow. If we make effort to be here by 10, I believe we'll finish on time. So we'll start with assets management tomorrow to be delivered by the asset, uh, national assets manager. On that note, I want to say thank you, thank you, everyone. Let's meet tomorrow morning. Uh, 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 uh,